Uh, sucks getting old. Oh yeah. <laughs> Especially for Daredevil, he's sixty now. Do you know that? Uh, do you remember the movie Lethal Weapon? Right. You know. Oh Daniel yeah, Glover, yeah. You know Mel Gibson. Yeah. You know, and the whole movie. You know, Danny Glover's going. I'm getting too old for this shit. Right. He yeah. was 44 years old when he was saying all that, which is ridiculous. It's like oh, it's man, just yeah. hysterical. Like you're 44 years well, old and you're. Well, oh, but yeah. Segment. Yeah, but damn, but then he kept making more lethal weapons. So it's like, you clearly aren't that old, Murtaugh. Yeah, exactly. He's just like, yeah, I'm not too old until I got my paycheck. And then it's exactly. Like, yeah, then I'm old enough. Jealous. Right. To party. Exactly. All right, let's do this. Rise and shine, my sinners. When Father Evil starts his day, he gets a little deadly. Deadly Grounds Coffee has the richest, smoothest flavor you'll find anywhere. It's sinfully delicious. Once you go deadly, you never go back. Order yours at getdeadly.com. Coffee's so good, <laughs> it's scary. Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. You are watching Splash Pages. My name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard here. And uh, as you may know, like, uh, you know, all the toys are gone. I've moved. And uh, yeah, got a bunch of boxes. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm in the process. So it's going to get ugly. Uh, but without further ado, Carrie, how's it going? Hey, everybody. It's going pretty good. Uh, Radicoscar is back on the bottle because I am finally free of concussion systems and can walk around on my own now. Kind Ooh. of. Yay! Oh, well, so, yay! Uh, <laughs> other than that, I we have got an awesome show tonight, guys. We have got a great guest, somebody we've had before, but we are so excited to have back. At least I am. I know I've, I've got some little what? hint for you. There's a puzzle box. That's that. That's my hint. If you if you weren't paying any attention whatsoever when you tuned in, but um, yeah, that's how I'm doing. Let's see how Jar's doing. How am I doing? You know, I, I was actually wondering earlier today, not how I was doing, but we, we do this every week where we we run the go between the four of us, and you know, before each show starts, I was wondering why do we do this. It, it, like everybody knows who we are by now we can't be introducing ourselves and telling uh, it, it's wonderful maybe i should ask this before the show started <laughs> it's always somebody's first show yeah. yeah is it oh that's true it's like it's always somebody's first comic never mind i got it i got it <laughs> drew oh god why does he start off like that <laughs> Hi, I'm Drew. If you know, then you know. 
That's all I'm gonna say tonight. Um, you know, this. You know what? Hold on a second. Put put. Let's put Carrie on. Let her introduce the guest. Okay, so tonight we have back with us the amazing DJ Chichester. Uh, we are going to be talking to him about uh, Daredevil Black Armor, as it is a 60th anniversary of Daredevil. Some other stuff he has coming up. And uh, we also are going to learn a little bit about what he's doing with some stuff with at Black Box. And he sent us a little teaser script for some stuff that he's been talking about with Marky Nelson. So Gary, he's in the room. Let's go look there at this. There I am. Yeah, there I am is. in a mirror image. I, I think uh, between the animated opening and that, um, that's all we, the time we have tonight. You know, that's yeah, pretty we're, much. We're good. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. good, everybody. And, um, you know, thanks for having me. Uh, thank you, guys. It's good to be back here. Now, is that Deadly Grounds Coffee? Uh, I think I saw that in Salem when I was there a couple of years ago. And, uh, uh, where, did, yeah. where did that come from? Uh, well, he's a local roaster here in Connecticut. And, oh, is it? Uh, okay. Yeah, but he goes all over the U.S. Uh, for conventions. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah, you, you can, you know, pretty much if there's a horror-related convention, you're going to find him. Uh, and, is it uh, good coffee? Is it, oh, is it's it, friggin' amazing. Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, it's, okay. it's, it's, I don't drink coffee. It's uh, it's the only coffee I drink. It's um, they make one that's a chocolate raspberry. Oh, oh, wow. so okay. it's not it's not super caffeinated. It, it's you know like some of those uh, you know like uh, kill me by caffeine or whatever. Uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, just normal amount of caffeine, but it's just uh, he focuses on flavor. So yeah, uh, yeah he just has some amazing flavors. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. No, no, no. You can get a twenty percent discount. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where's the coupon? <laughs> Just mention the dorkening. There, there are some non foo foo flavors too, though, because my mom I, for Christmas I got everybody in my family uh, Deadly Grounds coffee because everybody's a big coffee drinker. So some of them were like, "Yes, give me flavors." Some of them were like. Ooh, give me a dark roast. Give me a lighter right, roast. Right, right, so, right. You can't call so yourself like... deadly grounds and have it all be foo foo, right? So that's yeah. right. <laughs> so they have some seriously strong brews too. So yeah. So, so Dan, okay, what's been going on, on, and in. what's new? What is new? Uh, well, geez, when in our last episode, um, right? Uh, <laughs> when was that? That was like back uh, was... the fall, right? I think that was um, in October. What's up, signature October? King? Excellent. Yeah, it was it was it was almost a year ago. It was wow. uh it feels, yeah, it feels a little while. Um well, I mean, since then, uh comics wise, uh the Daredevil Black Armor series that we we'll, we'll oh, actually touch on, uh came out, uh didn't quite come and go, but uh was released in November, December, January, and February. It seems to have done well. I mean, I don't know what it did numbers wise, but people seem to enjoy it. Me and Nefo uh Diaz, the artist on it, enjoyed the heck out of it. I assume people really hated it, it being the internet. I would have heard about it, so I'm very pleased with how it turned out. And then the the trade paperback comes out in about a month. Um, nice. Seventh, so they collect all four issues, and I don't know, maybe they're going to throw a couple of extra things in there. Um, uh, if they are, they didn't tell me about that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's going to be very cool to have that collected together. And uh, mm -hmm. they actually asked me to do a 10-page... Um, uh, Daredevil Punisher story for the 60th anniversary issue of Daredevil that comes out next that sounds week. Sounds cool. So that's nice. cool. that was a little little flashback retro thing as well. It takes place in that same. I guess they pigeonholed me into the, into the <laughs> 90s. Which you is cannot funny. leave the 90s. Yes, I can't leave the 90s. So apparently, I scared the editor that I I slipped into the Punisher skin so quickly and so well. Um, it sort of knocked him back on his heels a little bit, but uh, he was he was happy with uh, how that turned out, and uh, that was fun to to dance with. So so that's been going on. How how did they initially get you back on to doing Black Armor? Like they asked. It was really it was a tough was sell. A like, do you want do you want to work <laughs> Daredevil again? Like you know, <laughs> I mean, literally, uh, it, that was it was that simple. I mean, it was uh, I was at a convention, really the first. I think it was the second convention I'd been at in 25 odd years and very odd years, and uh, which was Terrificon in Connecticut. You guys know that show well. And, yeah, yes, uh, we so do. We met and um, uh, and CB Sabolsky came up to me and introduced himself, and I was like, "Man, that name sounds so familiar." 
Oh, oh, <laughs> Phoebe Sapolsky. Um, that's a great page. That's that, that's about that's the first page I saw, and I said, "Oh man, whoever this guy is, uh, he he knows what what to do with this book." Um, but uh, you know, he introduced himself, said he liked the work, you know, from back in the day. He was very cordial. I jokingly said, "Hey, did you get those 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 uh, proposals I sent you?" And uh, and he said, well, "As a matter of fact," and he introduced the idea that they've been doing these what they were calling nostalgia series, where they were getting um, old creators, prior creators, legacy creators, uh, to come back and work on on properties. So would you be interested in doing something? He didn't say it was Daredevil at that point, um, but I presumed you know, that that's yeah. what it would be. Right. And he put me in touch with uh, Devin Lewis, who is the Daredevil editor. And then the first words out of Devin's mouth almost were, um, well, hello, I'm Devin. It was probably the first thing. But he said we want to do we want to do something with this with the black armor costume, which was really the last thing I expected to hear because uh, Scott McDaniel, who created the armor, you know, designed it and we co-created the idea behind it. Uh, we took so much shit for it when we created it uh, for this Fall from Grace storyline. Um, uh, readers didn't seem to like it, or there was mm -hmm. a very vocal group who did not like it there was a lot of comparison to power rangers and such so it was right. really the last thing i expected that they would want to do a story with well, but um but time had come around and and uh it had found its day and uh after talking with these guys a little bit we found a great groove for it and i'm really i'm i'm really pleased with how it turned out it, it felt like it hit all the right the right notes it's kind Absolutely. of like a, one of those one hit wonders from not one hit wonder, but like a 90s song or something that you heard back then that everybody did like Chumba Wumba or something that like, <laughs> I hate this song. But now 30 years, 40 years later, we're all singing along to it again. It Jar, are are you saying like it's back? Jar, Jar. Hold on, Jar. Are you saying that Black Armor is the Marvel's Chumba Wumba? I didn't mean it. In a, as in, as in, are you saying that, that in, in essence, black armor will get knocked down, but it will get back up again? It will get back up again. The fact I, that I, Dan's I, writing another story is kind of proving you accurate, buddy. So that's yeah. well, yeah. It's a good metaphor, bud. Well, the uh, black armor series did get uh, good reviews. So it did get the, very good reviews, yeah. very exceptional reviews. Um, and I, I'm, I think I, I did a Spotify playlist. I'm not quite sure. I. Uh, I put the Chumbawamba song on it. I might have. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good for Ben Murdoch. It was, um, but uh, um, if that's the song it gets compared to, um, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with almost anything that, that has happened with the series because it's really, it's it's been a gift, as I said to CB, um, uh, because I got to return to the to the book, which I had been removed from rather discourteously, you know, back in the mm -hmm. day. And, um, and uh, I'm a much better writer than I was then. And I got to kind of, I think, approach it in a much more um, studied, mature way. And I, mm. and every time I felt my old bad habits taking over, I could walk away from the keyboard for as long as it took. Like it wasn't the only thing right. that I was dependent on. So I could, I could exit the room <laughs> so, <laughs> until those diseased, you know, fingers uh, correct. Yeah. So, I Dan, I had a question. So I I've read a bit of Daredevil here and there, and I and yep. I what I enjoyed about reading Black Armor because I never really read a lot of your stuff, minus one or two issues of of Daredevil related crossover mania. You know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Batman uh, Daredevil being one of them. Right. I enjoyed how fun this is, and I think that's the funny thing about about Daredevil is I feel that few people really write him some sort of joy. I feel like some people really lean more into the, uh, I called it Catholicism noir, mm -hmm. where it's just, mm -hmm. it's very dark and you got the guilt and everything. Right. But like right. you, and I feel Mark Wade wrote him in a way that was very fun. It's kind of, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say swashbuckler E. But he was, mm -hmm. you know, he he was, you know, yeah, things suck sometimes. But, you know, he's he's doing his thing. He's enjoying life and he likes being Daredevil. Yeah, it's brought him a lot of hell, no pun intended, uh, especially right. the current direction. Right. Um, like when you were kind of coming back to it, like, did you was it just kind of like riding a, a red, you know, red colored bike? A red or did you have to kind of find the fun again? Oh, uh, no, Drew, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that. And I'm glad that came through. I, I think the fun of it 
that did come through was because I was having fun with it in the right. in the sense that there was nothing over my head. You know, when I was when I was 25, 30 years younger, I, you know, there was all the import of 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 this was my career, right? There was imposter right. syndrome. There was all these other things hanging over me. Am I doing good enough? Am I comparing myself to this? Uh, uh, and now it was just really leaning into telling a good story. And, right. and the editors were very supportive. Uh, they, they said, take some big swings, throw some weird characters in there, try some stuff out. Uh, the only real prerequisites were make Matt suffer, <laughs> which we did. We found some good places for him to suffer. Indeed. And, and I always, you know, I never was very analytical of my, my work. Um, in in this sense, I didn't I didn't spend a lot of time saying, well, what makes my Daredevil different than other Daredevils if they are? But mm -hmm. I did, and if you're going to compare me in any stretch to Mark Wade, even like this little bit, man, I'll take that and run with that. But because um, I, I love his stuff, um, but uh, I think it was th that sense that that while yes, Matt Murdock has to suffer, and there is the dark sides to the character and mm -hmm. the vigilante lawyer friction is, is paramount is that he's this also this hyper intelligent control freak. You know, he's a lawyer, right? He, right. he graduated with top honors. He's used to ruling a courtroom and, and commanding a jury. And there's gotta be a capacity of that. That is this arrogant manipulator <laughs> and and i liked finding those moments where you know everything sets itself up you've read the story and mm -hmm. folks spoiler alerts you know everything is set up by him so much earlier in the story you know some people thought the you know oh the mole man scene man that was a disappointment you know that you, know, you should have done more with that but it was a setup for what would come later right all these things he's manipulating into space and time so right. that he can finally pull the you know the cord on it or push the detonator on it so it all blows up around them you know he's seeing these pieces if you'll excuse the visual you know mm -hmm. reference with the blind man um to get those things happening and i think that's the energy of the character is that swashbuckling sense um that i i find i enjoyed a lot um without having and there are still moments where it suffers horribly and you know we play lots of biblical references so i right. get all that in there too thanks i liked a lot of the back uh flashbacks to him studying his father at the gym mm -hmm. and the way that he went about it and how you tied that into the story with like that you know things i learned from that are what are going to keep me going here and right that, that was just a right. neat like flashback to keep to keep with continuity too that you kept going back to it I think it's interesting for me, at least, um, and maybe to you guys, is that I think ultimately my stories become fairly character, if not driven, there's character there. I, I, I try to invest the characters with them. But I, I, I will admit I, I generally springboard out from plot moments, right? You know, this most of the story, 80% of the story came to me on an August afternoon, and I just started writing. I just started writing like well this scene and this happens and the kingpin mm -hmm. does this and you know and then i oh this this lego piece snaps over here so right. i'd say a good 80 percent. that's amazing to me came together that fast and right. and then i i sent that off to Devin and tom and i said here here's a really rough crazy construct what do you guys think of it and then when i got on the phone with them finally they were like um uh, you know, they started kind of going off in all these other directions and I'm taking notes and I'm saying, oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll try that. We'll try that. And finally I said, well, well, what did you think of the thing I sent you? Was there anything in there? And there's this long pause. And then Devin's like, oh, oh, <laughs> and he hadn't seen the email. <laughs> right. So everything we just talked about didn't apply or did apply, but he hadn't seen the outline when he saw it. Then he was like, oh, this is really good. But the point I was making a long way around was all that great stuff with the father and the flashbacks to the gym weren't there. And, and the father becomes this spine, you know, that really, I think runs through it and those flashbacks and his relationship and how they sort of pull things through those came after the fact, you know, as a, as the story was in place and then these enriching moments 
started to kind of, again, just bubble up, you know, um, and that's, I, I find it's very interesting and cool to work in that organic way because the story and the characters are kind of flowing out for me versus me forcing it to happen. Right. And, and another interesting thing about it is that I, I admit that when I originally learned of the armor, I kind of scoffed at it because I was like, what this like I, I i thought of you know the 90s being yeah. that time of 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 overindulgence and excess i mean you know totally. shoulder pads billion pouches gig you know cable mm -hmm. um <laughs> you know uh basically you know just the liefeldian kind of yep. imagey -y style stuff um but then what i liked is your like even just four issues you you explain this armor is not just because he woke up and said, you know what? I could use a change. I'm tired. We're going to go red and black. We're going to get bulky. You know, <laughs> you, you, you know, and you saw him fighting against, you know, yeah, you're used to, to uh, you know, the Kingpin, Bullseye, uh, uh, Electra, and a few other of the rogues gallery. Uh, this, sure. But, you know, Sabretooth, uh, Hobgoblin, Hydra, Mole Man, these are all bigger villains right, than a right. a vigilante lawyer from hell's kitchen so you kind of need to upgrade and, and matt murdoch isn't luke cage he's not mm -hmm. invulnerable you mm -hmm. know yeah he doesn't yeah he has superhuman er abilities but he's, he doesn't have super strength you know right. he can i mean we've seen him he gets fucked up regularly yeah you know fucked up in this story too i mean there we, you go we, exactly we, so we, it's we just spend some time you know that. so i think what i liked is that even from someone who hadn't read your work until mm -hmm. you know uh, recently, well, I was like, I was like, you know, this make it makes sense. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to last forever because God forbid we we institute change in in comic books, we're always going to revert back. But I was like, like you, it made sense. So I was like, okay, like, okay, he, this is why he needed the armor. I was like, well, my, you know? I thank you again, Drew, for for seeing that and that and. You know, I mean, it was my job for that to come through, so I'm glad it did. I mean, my favorite headline when they they finally announced this, um, you know, last summer, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, they said, "Oh, this book is coming out," and, and with the best headline was "Worst Writer Returns with Worst Costume Ever." So that was like the one that like I just put up like on my Whoa. you know wall. That that was the ego check. Like, don't don't ever get carried away with yourself because there's right, but because there's but always that guy. Right, there's wow. always that guy. But we overcame that, I know, from the reactions, uh, just because yeah. we did, you know, we did um, push past that expectation that it was just going to be a nostalgia money grab or just, you know, big shoulder pads and pouches. And, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 um, and I think we validated the reason for it and, uh, and, and just, again, made it, made it this fun adventure and showed Absolutely. the potential of of that costume and why you I, could tell stories with it I, um there was a I, very limited window right before yeah. they destroyed it and marvel didn't use it again so, right like i was kind of hoping it would be one of those things where you would it would just be so it would do so well you would just keep writing because i was like wow i'm really digging this this adventure like i i haven't Shit, I haven't bought Daredevil since Mark Wade's run ended. So I was like, all right. I mean, right. I've heard great things about others that followed him. Um, but I was like, wow, this is really good. Like, I, I, I kind of want some more. But I was like, okay, well, well, the nostalgia glasses. You know, well, calm it's down. Funny, you know, it's like, I mean, I wrote it. Yes. And and Netho, you know, again, phenomenal artist. I think he captured yeah. this vibe, this, this 90s retro vibe but also in a very modern way mm -hmm. but as i'm writing it you know there were people who would you know leave notes and say oh man it's it's got that 90s brutality or uh or um or or how dare like uh you know daredevil look he's messing with the kingpin and and you know and that and and what that poor guy and it, it, you know who it, the the kingpin didn't steal that car the guy's got paper why is he abusing him it's the kingpin for god's sake <laughs> yeah what, right you, like but but I don't think any of the violence or action or anything. I didn't right. write it thinking it's '90s. I just wrote it. Maybe my head's just in that in that area. But I think if you transpose that story, and he didn't have that costume, 
and Netho didn't capture that vibe, you know, in that right. way, it would kind of work anywhere because I think it is a, a decent, solid Daredevil story. And that's mm -hmm. again, what we set out to, to do. Um, and, uh, and maybe it's the sort of thing that becomes selective. Like I would hope, and I said this to Devin, you know, and, and maybe that's why he had me do the 10 page, you know, Daredevil Punisher story too, is you could, you posit the idea that there were more stories with that costume, right? That's what it really is. Not a what if story, right. like not a make-believe story. They're all make-believe stories. But you, you just posit the idea that there were more than four or five stories with the costume that we just never saw. And this is one mm -hmm. of them. Right. So why not do more of them in that world since now we've set it all up? We've set up his Jack Batman persona, sense. his street Please. legal, you know, thing. And um, it would be fun to do that. But that's not my decision, right? My right. Decision. I think it would be fun to do that with multiple books. Go back yeah. for like to the 90s or even even do a few different decades well, they've done this. I mean, Ghost Rider. There's a, there's, you know, there's a, there's a Ghost Rider with Danny Ketch. There's a number of Spider-Man titles. I think that uh, that Danny <laughs> Fingeroth or um, uh, uh, Peter David had worked on. Um, you know, I, I think I was yeah. long down the list of those. Some of them I think have been better than others, from what I understand. Uh, you know, I, I didn't read. I read the, the Ghost Rider one because I'm friendly with Howard Mackey. Right. Um, but. Um, uh, you know, and I think some people see them uh, as money grabs, like they're nostalgia money grabs, and certainly they could be. I mean, yeah, but, but what's uh, not a money grab at this point in, in time? <laughs> well, you're like, trying to sell the book. I mean, you, yeah, you, yeah. This, is, this isn't an art project. You're, no, <laughs> it, it, it's about money, people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. At and the yeah. end of the day, whatever sells the most is what sure. they're going to continue on with. Right. Absolutely. Well, it, it, and exactly with uh, with nostalgia being so you know popular nowadays, you know, you, like you uh, you said with CB with the retro series, yep. uh, Batman has like three different storylines right now that are are retro based, and we're talking about another one tonight. Um, it, it just seems like you know there's a lot of thirst for these older stories. Uh, wh what do you what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's you know a lot of us want to go back to like you know simpler storylines? Have comics become too complicated nowadays? Um, you know wh wh why do you think heroes mainly? Yeah, I mean I think there's a there's a sense of some people in power now, right? Grew up on certain things. Right, Devin, right. CB, you know, they may have read Fall from Grace, you know, as a Daredevil thing when they were 15 years old, you know, or something right. like that. And they thought that was the cool, the coolest shit ever costume. And and this convoluted story was like just chock full of energy. And that plays into my favor, right? 25 years later. Now it's my responsibility, and I think I achieved that, and I know Death mm -hmm. achieved it, you know, to to take that offer and run with it beyond what they did, what they offered, right? I could have just done a by the numbers yeah. thing. And right. instead, I think I deconstructed it and then put it back together in a somewhat unexpected way to deliver on some great beats, some callbacks to my work. You know, there's a bunch of little Easter eggs and such that might be there that reference things that I had done, but not in a horribly overt way, but also then capture the the fun essence of what I think, you know, was excited about the character, um, right. the senses and that manipulation and that swashbuckling aspect and, you know, a good bit of suffering and a couple of Bible references and, you know, call it a day. Uh, <laughs> but, but I think, you know, I've read some, I've read personally, and I'm sure you have some great modern day comics that are, are like, Holy shit, that's amazing. Yep. And then I've read some stuff, um, I read a, a, and we will not call out names here. Um, when I was doing the Punisher piece, I decided to read some current day Punisher or within the last couple of year Punisher stuff. Mm -hmm. And I read some of the most convoluted, lame as Frank Castle, you know, Frank Castle loses his gun, you know, type of stuff, which to me was just un, Frank Castle stands around talking and talking and talking you know, type of stuff. And it's like, <laughs> what is going on here? And I'm not trying to champion the Punisher or Frank Castle, but no. I've done a fair share of Frank Castle 
uh, storyline. So I think I have a good vibe. I'm not Stephen Grant. I'm not, you know, at, at that level. But I think there is a, not back to basics, Leo, so much as, as just hitting the right beats in any old story, right? It, it's, it's just basic storytelling. And I tried to do that. I don't know. I tried to do that. I did do that. I'm gonna, yeah, you I'm did. Gonna play, I'm going to play the ego. I well, hit the beats because I worked really consciously on when you would turn that page, there would be a story beat and there would be a cool line and rinse, repeat, <laughs> you know, for the, for the next set. And if I didn't, if I didn't get a charge out of the turn of phrase or landing it, I threw that scene out and I went back and redid it again and again and again until mm -hmm. I was like nodding my head at it. And now, when you get onto a series like this, do, do does Marvel like hook you up with a backlog of everything? So, like, you know, you're sitting there writing, like, oh fuck, did did this happen? Can I use this? <laughs> like, how do you well, keep all that stuff straight? Um, that's a great question. And um, fortunately, most of the stuff that took place with this black armor was my stuff anyway, right? Yeah, it was. So I was somewhat familiar with it. Uh, so they mostly sent me like my issues of that, you know, work. Um, they did send me some of the following issues, which I had never read when I was fired off the book. I had never read what followed immediately. And so immediately following my run, there was a god awful, I, I think it was Warren Ellis um, uh, story. It was a one issue story where they spent 22 pages destroying the costume. So he literally, you know, like it's it, it, Matt Murdock is like, what what was I thinking? And he's he's taking scissors to this biomimetic, you know, super hardened armor fabric and just ripping it apart. It, it's like somebody really hated that costume in editorial. And wow. so they spent 22 pages destroying it, which if I had read that at the time, I would have gone into a depressive spiral that you would not have found me. I would have been at the bottom of the, the trench in the ocean. Like I would have been so depressed at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Now I read it and I laughed out loud, you, you know, because it was so ridiculous and such a lost opportunity, you know, hang the costume in the daredevil cave and say, yeah. you know, I don't need this anymore. And we'll get back to it 30 years later. But, um, but they, I did a number of reads of other daredevil stuff. You know, I read, a lot of the Chip Zdarsky stuff, which I've been reading. I read Mark Wade stuff, um, just because, again, I like Mark Wade. More to get myself into the zone of, not to try to compare myself to that or capture any essence of what they were doing, but just to make sure, do I still get this? Right. And, and, I, and then I, I felt I did, and then I just kind of, again, went off and did, I just felt like I did my own thing. And, and it just felt very natural doing that, as opposed to, Having to, and, and then I didn't worry about it too much. Like, is my saber tooth um, the right saber tooth? I don't know, but it sounds pretty good to me. Oh, is Mr. Right. Hyde really talking a kind of a Cockney accent? Eh, probably not, but I had him do it because it sounded good. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> right. and nobody stopped me, so I just ran with it. Well, uh, it's tough to write an accent, too, by the way. You did well. Yeah, it really is. Ask anyone who ever tried writing Gambit. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I know. did that bad once badly, you know. There you go. See? Um, I think also, Dan, kind of what you touched on is something we've talked about, which is just that ongoing discussion about the evolving desire of comic fans, because you see that they'll vent, usually mm -hmm. online. Horrible. Uh, sometimes Horrible. in person, which I always find is really amusing, because I was like, very bold. Uh, where it's they want change, they want things to be different, new ground and whatnot. But then, when individuals like yourself or the new crop or whatever try to do that, mm -hmm. you know, oh my God, this is not faithful to the character. How could you do this? Mm -hmm. You know, go fuck yourself. And it's just, uh, but then when you give them, you know, it's like, oh, well, this character just caught in this repetitive loop of, uh, of you know, it's like, uh, you no, know, Leo, no offense. You know, how many times can the Batman punch the Joker? Like, at this point, mm -hmm. are any of those teeth real? I just don't even know anymore. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's 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 that that ongoing battle. And I think that that's the real challenge why creativity goes backwards. 
because mm-hmm. you want to go back to the time when things were a little less constricted. You was a bit more creativity. You didn't have the internet. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you didn't have that to worry about. So, you know, like, okay. Like, it's like, Dan, the, the, the reason I bring all this up is that in your opinion, when, if somebody was trying to write their take um, on Daredevil or any mm-hmm. ca- other character there, even your, your, your beloved um, Cenobites uh, mm-hmm. from the Hellraiser universe, like what, what advice would you give them to just say, like, if they asked you, like, oh, you know, you did this, like, what do you, like, do you have any advice? Like, what advice would you give them? Giving or, to the, like, the, what, the, how the would you moderate the, expectations, I guess? The, the creative team, like a writer and an artist? Yeah, like, something like that. The, the advice to them? Um, fuck them. Fuck the audience. Like, I mean, honestly, and I don't mean that callously, because I love an audience, right? Right. But it's, but it's, it's, you, you bend yourself into pretzels, not good, tasty, warm, salty, mustard-covered pretzels, but bad pretzels. Yeah. You know, if you start to try to um, overthink the expectations, and again, I did that during this. I mean, I'm 30 right. years later, and I'm a much better writer, and I'm a much more disciplined writer, and et cetera, et cetera. But old habits die hard, right. and it and it sometimes sneaks in and says, well, should you do that, or should you do this way, or maybe you're not saying enough, or maybe you need to overwrite this. And, and, or, or maybe he shouldn't do this because people won't like that, but you have to find that zone. And this sounds like a a cliche, but it is a truism. You Mm -hmm. have to find that flow of the character that they are helping lead you through the story. And then you just follow them. And then you are their scribe. You are their Ouija board to sort of make the things happen in the right way. You know, there were places where, Again, I might have wanted to try to force it this way or that line would have made that situation a lot easier or, geez, here's a favorite character of mine. Maybe I should bring him in because maybe this is my truly last swing at the Marvel Universe and I should try Mm -hmm. to cram every friggin' in-joke and thing Mm -hmm. in here. And instead, I think, you know, if you've got a charge for something, like follow it and that will make the story as good as you can possibly tell it. And maybe you're not that good. Maybe I'm not that good. I don't know. But you, 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 you will, you will deliver to the best of your abilities mm-hmm. if you, if you get the rest of it out of your way. The naysayers are going to come out of the woodwork, and they will kill you if you read too much of it. Right. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, for every really positive review, and there were a lot of positive reviews. You know, I click on a couple. Forget that ridiculous headline. But you know, some of them were like, "Eh, it's an okay Daredevil story. Nothing special." Like, all right, well, move on. You, you right. know, don't, don't, and maybe it is, I don't know, but you can't get hung up on it. But I'm also not Tom King getting his fucking picture burned like by mm-hmm. idiots right now. You know, there's these people taking Tom King's picture and burning it, you know, on online because the guy is doing Nightwing and Batgirl or whatever, and people don't like what he's doing. What kind of horror show is that? Wow. You know, that they're, 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 you know, or Ed Pisker, you know, uh, you know, getting, right. getting so, I mean, I can't get over that. I did not know Ed Pisker. I liked his work, but I, I, I'm still reeling from that. But there is that horror show of, of, you know, that pressure. And while you, you know, I think you just have to focus, Drew, on, on doing the story to the best of your abilities. Okay. And then, separating yourself from the rest of it um you know in the real world very few people will come directly up to you at least they you know and, and say you suck but when they do you can corner them right away and say tell me why i suck i mean i used to do that at conventions all the time and then that would knock people back on their heels and they'd have to actually discuss it online of course they can just send you links or conspiracy videos or just keep typing you suck you suck you suck you suck you suck you know, oh wow you know um but um, but I think that's the that's the advice I would give people is if you have a passion for the story, tell the story and and let the chips fall where, where they may. Okay. I'm I, I didn't know that it was going to be released as a uh paper trade paperback, was it? Yeah. Was coming yeah. Out? Mm-hmm. In May, May 7th, yes. 
May 7th. Not that I know okay. the date. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. I like. I, well, I can add it to my. I have. I have all four of them in the in, in my nice little in my closet, all safe and sound in, in my box. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank but, you, Karen. Yeah, I'm gonna be hunting you down at some point to get them signed. We'll, we'll Please do. That and Please do. Uh, I, I I think it would be great. You said you didn't know if they were doing any add-ons, but when we had you on last time, we were able to see some of the black and white pages. Yeah, done up yeah. Before, and that would be great if they threw in some of the. It would the, be. The it one would where be. it's the split down the middle between Matt Murdock and yes. his alter yes. ego is just yes. gorgeous. Yeah, I mean Andrew Dahlhaus did a, a a wonderful job with the colors, but I it was so burned into my head from the black and white artwork as I was looking at that for such a long time, you know, between mm -hmm. Netho's and then JP's, uh, JP Mayer's, um, you know, inks, you know, that when the color finally showed up, it was like, it, it almost looked wrong. <laughs> as nice as the color was, I was so used to seeing it black and white. I, I, I would hope at least they would include all the covers because they did quite a few variant covers um, mm -hmm. for the book. You know, there were probably, I want to say at least 10 you know, across the four issues beyond Mark Bagley's, um, you know, uh, which is, you know, which was like an amazing uh, thing. Um, you know, Mark, Mar I saw Mark at a convention and like, and then like out of the blue, he like sent me, well, you can't quite see it. Anyway, it's the art, it's the artwork, it's the cover for the issue, which I thought was an amazing oh, that's awesome. kind gesture, you know, um, it was beyond belief that he actually did that for me. But, um, uh, but, um, but I would yeah, hope as the writer, you guys, as the writer, it's kind of like a bummer. You don't get the kickback of the original art and stuff like no, that. No, no, it was always a gift. And and Mark did that. That's you know, Mark was quote unquote just the cover artist. So I mean, he wasn't involved in the interior. So for him to make that gesture was um, that's pretty really cool. Yeah. On. Um, but I'd hope they include the covers. I think they were going to include. At one point, they had asked me and Netho to write sort of a an afterward. Uh, which I know we both did. Um, and at one point they were going to, I think, be included in the last issue, uh, mm -hmm. which didn't happen. But I think they were going to include them in the paperback. But I don't know again for sure what's going to be in there. Um, I'll, I'll, it'll be a big surprise when I go and pick it up. <laughs> there you go. So you had touched so on that your uh, favorite villain, you, you know, you might use them, but it sounds like you didn't use them. Who is your favorite villain? Oh no! It wasn't a favorite villain. It was um, this terror incorporated character, this terror mercenary boogeyman character I had created and used. You know, has always been like a like a sort of a spirit animal for me and a and a fun um, uh, character. He, he appeared in some Daredevil issues. You know, when I wrote the book, um, and there was a point in time where it was like, man, I bet you I can fit him in here somewhere. You know, he could have like a little cameo, and wouldn't that be fun? Oh, yeah. But but it just became distracting to the story, and the story has so much going on. But I think just the right amount going on, you know, it didn't it didn't hit the point of like breaking itself. But one more thing would have gotten to that point. I would have been in, I would have started to be indulgent and not serving mm -hmm. the needs of the story. Okay, Carrie, I cut you off, so go ahead. Oh no, that's okay. Um, I I was gonna say. Uh, Coming from, <clears throat> this is going to be sound weird, uh, jumping back to things that are in my closet that I would uh -huh. like more of, um, do we have any news coming up on uh, Axel's Inferno? Well, um, that's a good question. Um, uh, Carl is working on it, uh, not quite as fast as I would like. Uh, <laughs> he's made some good progress on it, but um, uh I, I I would hope that we'd have some news on the second issue within the next two weeks, you know, uh, to be able to like move forward, which is not again quite as fast as I would like it, but um, two weeks is better than two months. So right. um, I would hope to have some some news on that. He's he's got about over half uh, the second issue uh, worked up. It looks pretty extraordinary, you know, as strong as you know where it was before, and this is. This is uh, a really extraordinarily strong issue. The, the first issue was, um, you know, set up and intrigue and, and such. This is where it really delivers on the, the core idea of it. And we really get, you know, great interaction with uh, Necros, who's the, you know, the, you know, the main demon and such. So um, I'm really 
I'm really looking forward to kind of finding a place for that that working out. Um, all the elements are there. Uh, we just have to line them up and then go through the misery of Kickstarter <laughs> all over <You're>, uh, again. <laughs> yes, good luck. Yes, it's like exactly. The first two days and then the last two days. Yeah, I I have to. I I was so eager to get it going last time you know that we did the what the preliminary thing and then you know we had like 50 followers 75 followers and i just said to hell with it and you know turn the key on it mm -hmm. i i think i have to wait until there's a significant number more before we turn the key you know put the put the preview thing up wait until right. there's like 200 plus followers if not more before i turn the key Mm. uh just to get that exposure because we did go pretty good on the first couple of days and then we really hit a valley i mean there were some great people who kind of came out and uh you know some other kickstarter folks uh, had us on their shows you guys did um graham yeah. nolan was terrific he he helped push me oh, nice. uh, a little bit and um and those helped with a little boost but it was really it was really kind of down to the wire and um mm -hmm. and that's not a uh, and, and, you know, there's just a heavy lift all along, you know, you're, you're constantly pushing it. Then you got to do fulfillment. Then we had some weird printing issues. You know, we were pretty close to the mark in terms of timing and such, but, uh, but it was, it was a little bit of, a little bit of added hassle that um, is necessary to do it. And, and people keep pointing out to me, you know, good friends of mine say, stop moaning. You created something and it's out there. Um, which is good. I like that outside perspective. You know, it, it's it's a good it's a good bracing refresher because I'm carrying all this. Oh my God, we had to deal with this. And we had to deal with that, and the boxes didn't fit, and the boards that Carl bought didn't fit the bags. <laughs> you know, so we're there we're there trimming the boards. You know, and and all these little grinding bits, and and um, but then at the end of the day, the people who just got the package, they were like, "Oh, this is cool." So I, I need to live. It was it. awesome. Yeah. Like, yep, that person right there. She, thank you, she got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank oh, you very God. much. Thank you for backing it. And I'm glad you liked it. And I think it's a, yeah. a worthwhile adventure. So I'm looking forward to doing more of it. Uh, just to back up for a second, by the way, uh, Black Armor had 15 variant covers throughout the four 15. issues. 15. Wow. Throughout, throughout the four issues. Uh, looks. It's not too bad. That's only about three to four an issue. No, but still, I mean, for, for, for a costume that they destroyed in a bedroom with scissors. Yeah, right. You know, 30 <laughs> years later to get 15 variant covers. I think there's more black armor artwork now than there is uh, from then. What, yeah, funny well, story. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I, I gonna, mean, no, what's going to happen is you're going to know you really made it when you see someone cosplaying as it. Oh, I yeah. offered... And I repeat the offer on your show. I said, if I'm at a convention, I don't even need to be at the convention. Somebody just needs to send me a photo of themselves from a convention in a black armor cosplay. And I will reward them with a full set of the original run of Fall from Grace from my Ooh. own personal collection. Boom. And, and anybody who shows up, at, if, I, if I'm at a convention... And you, the first person at every show that comes to me with a black armor book gets the autograph for free. So, um, uh, nice. but the, I'm waiting for the cosplay because the cosplay, they made it look, there was one variant cover, Leo, that is like, um, they got this guy, Raphael uh, Grissetti, who's a 3D artist who I think worked on another, another God of War or Gears of War. It's one of those, you know, great, you know, Xbox games. And mm -hmm. um, and so he did the whole thing in 3D. It looks real, you know. It looks photorealistic. Oh, and cool. I said, some cosplayers have to look at this and say, I can make that. Like I oh, could, yeah. I could, yeah, I, not, could right? I could, I could, I could 3D print the shoulder plates and you know do all that stuff. So uh, I'm waiting. I, I know Listen. a couple of uh, <clears throat> Matt Murdock cosplayers. I, I wonder if any of them are are, are thinking about this. No, no it's a, it's the... probably. It's probably not that's popular. It. Yeah, that's look it. at that. That's that looks isn't that great. Right? That's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I love that. But if mm -hmm. I've seen the Mark Chichetto one, the Marco Chichetto one, which is, looks great, I've seen uh, the Mark Wade. You know, I'm not Daredevil. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. outfit. I've seen a lot of Matt Murdock's. It, um, it, but it's, it's actually funny Rock. you say that because I was at a I was at a, a thrift store. Carrie, you know the story. I was at a thrift store 
um, uh, shopping for a, a quick outfit for an 80s party. And I was uh, just perusing the suits. Um, mm -hmm. And I found, and I, and I kid you not, an all red suit. Like just completely like daredevil right. red. And I was like, wait a second. It's and I was like, it's probably not even my size. So, <laughs> but it, it was, and it was funny because it was an in, in international size. So I was like, like, I was like, geez, I didn't, can't believe this thing fit. I can't even read the tag. Um, so I, I, I bought it, uh, $46. I got home, I put it on and I, and I, the first thing I thought of was in Mark Wade's second run when he's kind of out and about shorter hair, all red suit daredevil. Right. And I took a photo and I sent it to, I think I put it in our group chat and I was like, is anybody looking for a Mephisto? Just out of curiosity, <laughs> you know, but nice. I remember cause I had the whole thing and I put on like a red shirt and a red tie and I walked up down the hallway where we live uh, to, to the computer room where my, my girlfriend was on the um, computer. And uh, I was like, so what do you think? She said, you look like a human licorice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you look like a red of red vines mascot. I'm like, I know. Mm -hmm. you're, like, it, was, hey, it was ridiculous. You're on the East Coast. It is Twizzlers. Forget red vines. Yeah, I know that. Okay. But I literally <laughs> looked like a human version of Clifford as a as a as a as a lawyer. <laughs> It was, it was, it was insane, <laughs> but I was just thinking, I was like, you know, if I get shades, red shoes and a cane, like I'm basically courtroom daredevil. The devil. When you, yeah. When you so. said the, the international sizing, I thought you said, and I opened the lapel and it said property of Alan Moore on the inside or something like oh that. Oh my God. You you know. Know. No, I think that, I think, uh, I, I wouldn't be able to touch it. I actually enjoyed the Watchmen movie. <laughs> I'd be like, ah, I can't, it's not worthy. You know, it's like lifting up Thor's hammer. You know, no, no, absolutely. Not. Can't do um, that. But it, it, no, co no, Daredevil cosplayers are always funny about that jar. It, you know, you know since Terrificon is Daredevil themed this year, I we, know we're talking about getting into a suit. You, you could wear that suit for interviews, Drew. Yeah, I, you I'm know, what? you keep bringing it up, Carrie. I just, I feel like work. I would do it simply to have people ask me who I am. And each time I want to come up with a different answer. And I think my favorite one off the top of my head is I'm the human Kool-Aid man. There you go. Ooh, you know, yeah. you know just, exactly. Just show up. But I want to be the Kool-Aid man. Uh, and I, I want to act like I'm giving subpoenas. Like, oh, yeah, you've been served. Right, been some served. kind of mashup of like the Macho Man Randy Savage and the Kool-Aid guy. Oh, yeah. But, uh, um, I think I'm the only. I think I'm the only uh, Daredevil person not at Terrific. <laughs> oh, no, no. oh, you're not coming everybody. this year. Oh no, man. I mean, I um, I had committed to um, a show in San Jose, and then Mitch moved the show because he didn't want to conflict with um, New York Comic Con. Uh, right. So he shifted yes. Terrificon, and when he shifted Terrificon, it had it was a, on top of this. Um, San Jose show I'd already committed to. So oh, that um, sucks. But that I know he's got a ton of people and he's yeah, he's gonna do I mean he's got so many he's doing a big daredevil. I know I think he's gonna do like some daredevil themed oh, know, yeah. stuff for that yeah. reason. But he's got Lee and uh Klaus and um uh, uh I mean a ton of people. So absolutely his his art and writer uh the 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 artist alley or whatever is always just overwhelming i know huge. it's easier to list who you're not going to have i told them yeah just exactly list the people you don't have it'd be shorter list you know yeah, I mean, yeah. incredible talent. Yeah, absolutely yeah it, it's because it, i saw like the daredevil i was like oh i wonder if dan is gonna be come back it'd be nice to you know uh to to shoot the shit i mean C carrie especially would just gladly sit at that panel and dominate the questions again you know? oh yeah we could have you come save us again but um yeah exactly oh, no, I, mean, I, I, this... I, I i love the show and i i um i you know obviously it's right in the backyard essentially but right um, that was the only reason why yeah well well san jose dan's gonna be sick that weekend and yeah. <laughs> no, be hijacked no. the mohegan <laughs> he's hiding behind the boxes in leo's closet that is where you'll find dan signing everything that we own on splash pages so we all gather 
Um, so there, there were a couple of things. I don't want to keep you too much longer. I hope I'm not stepping over you guys' questions, but I was oh, really no, in, in, in what you sent, uh, the, the werewolf script that you'd meant. Yeah, I thought you got to, yeah, I mean, you, I know you guys are, are into behind the scenes stuff and, and yeah. obviously spooky stuff. So, um, I don't know what to do with that. Maybe you've got an idea. Uh, cause I was, I've been, ca I caught up with Mark Nelson, who I know you guys know. And, um, uh and i hadn't we hadn't talked directly in a long long time and um uh too long but we finally caught up and uh and we were just it, it could have been yesterday you know we were just falling back into our old, old rhythms i think mark's just fabulous and uh and we were talking about werewolves and he was doing some some werewolf illustrations for some project he's working on and uh and it just sparked this idea and, and i just riffed on it for three minutes with him and then it was one of those things after I got off the phone, um, you know, I just couldn't quite get it out of my head. So that's why I wrote, just wrote that story. Not, ex you know, there's no expectation of him illustrating it or anything. I mean, I sent it to him and said, you know, what do you think? And he got a kick out of it. But uh, it was just one of those like creative exercises, um, which had no home. And so instead of just letting it, you know, say, oh, what if, you know, I, I, I've tried to train myself to at least do something with something instead of kind of let it let it that's follow. kind of that, cool yeah Not it was fun it's stagnant no otherwise you know it just becomes like a clip mm. do, do you guys well you have you said you had no expectations with it um yeah i i think right now monster comics are coming back with a kind of a a, a big like almost a renaissance for uh the 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 old school um one of the universal mon monster mm -hmm. uh, monsters and all that stuff seem to be coming back so i think I if anything right now is a good time to hit with that kind of a story yeah and that would be fun i i saw there just um or i just saw today i don't know how long it's been there was a there's some new werewolf by night I guess series coming from Marvel that's so vicious they have to polybag it. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, said, uh, well, you know, so vicious. Uh, well, you know, kids can't be exposed to it. But I don't know if that's an indication of anything. But um, I thought that was kind of funny. It's a money grab. <laughs> yeah. <it's> money grab. <laughs> fill fill the polybag with blood. Then it's really vicious. You know? I mean, oh, they did recently do Joe Hill's Wolverton Station in Creep Show. So, oh, we, did they? Okay, yeah, yeah. My, Michael Walsh was on a little bit ago, and we were just because he illustrated it. But, okay. um, I mean, so they're they, they've got some wolves going on over there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then they do the nice okay. anthology, so you can do you know, you got like 12 solid pages there, so yeah, oh, yeah, that's I've read it, guys. It's really good. That might be I a direction check into that, you. yeah, and then I mean, Carrie, yeah, I, isn't tales from the crypt or some or like ec comics coming back to i remember right like an old horror uh, yeah line, I remember, remember? I, I rem that was in the news a few uh, weeks ago wasn't it yeah i think gore shriek might be coming back mm -hmm. yeah i just well, no, remember I like one of those old horror comics like like the ones that used to be banned because god forbid a kid see a skull um oh, yeah. God yeah, remember me. they're coming back and they've got all these big creators. So I mean, Dan, this is the time, man. Horror is back, man. We yeah, they man. buried it, shit came back. It's so. always the case with horror. You know, horror yeah. comes back during the worst of times. It's uh it's uh and we're in pretty bad people, times. <laughs> we're in bad times, so yeah. <laughs> exactly. It feels like yeah. uh, that's what <laughs> comes back around. But um yeah, maybe I'll look for for a home for it. Um, like I said, Absolutely. it wasn't it wasn't uh anything I expected Mark to to jump on obviously if he did you know i'd be thrilled but it was really just a conversation among you know kind of creative uh friends and it just uh, got stuck in my head as we were talking about that whole idea of could you you know what what would happen if uh you know the werewolf started biting people <laughs> before he I became the werewolf oh yeah i you had me like because you'd mentioned mark nelson i was, I was totally reading it and then like picturing it as how in my mind, he was drawing. I was jumping all the way back to black and white and stuff. And it was oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mark, Mark, Mark was like one of the, or is one of the people, you know, who always um, felt to me like 
if you're right, if you're working with him, you cater to his strengths, uh, you know, which are many, but, you know, especially if they're creatures, especially if there are monsters, you, you know, that that's his jam and you, you give it to him. I, I got to do a two part Nightbreed story with him. And, um, and, you know, I'd got rid of the, the human characters in the story so quickly, just so we could get to these disgusting giant monsters that, oh, yeah. that I knew he wanted to kind of be into. So we, we, you know, we crafted a, a almost alternate Nightbreed universe just filled with more Mark Nelson-y, uh, you know, moments, uh, which was just such a, a fun piece to work on. That, that sounds like you're a good person to collaborate with. Uh, just you, you, you tend to work with people's strengths and stuff like that. that that's really uh, a good thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I mean, I, I think I know I learned that from, you know, working as an editor and you, you know, you, you come to realize people's artists, you know, creators have strengths and, and weaknesses and things that they, they're better at. I mean, that's just the way things are and you're not going to give, you know, people can be very flexible and they can adapt to a lot of situations, but if somebody had strong horses, don't put them on a Western, you know, it's just not going to, it's not going to add up or you're going to get a lot of shots of the saddle. You know, you're yeah. never going to see the horse full frame, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, so, um, uh, but you know, with people like that, you really kind of play to their, their sensibilities and, the, and their strengths more. And I, I've read, I think three scripts of yours so far, each to a different, artist and mm -hmm. it, it's easy to tell who you've worked with and stuff because you you can just the, the, the different details that you include in writing it's just like with this person you get a little bit more explanatory with this person you're just mm. like oh they already know what i'm talking about they're just going to do exactly what i want anyway <laughs> they, they're in my head sometimes i mean that's the best i mean um sometimes the notes are to myself too you know it's like to remember this is what this scene is about, or or this is what I'm hoping to kind of go for here, which mm -hmm. are good reminders after the fact, especially when I don't know what the dialogue is. You know, there there was right. you know, going back to that black armor, there were there were scenes where almost the whole dialogue again kind of came to me that day, like that whole von Strucker um monologue, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, kind of came to me as I was sketching it out, like I could feel the you know, channeling my inner white supremacist. Yeah, God, God help me. But I mean, you, you know, this, this, you know, the, 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 the beats and the, you know, the awfulness and, and the insults. But then there were, there were scenes, especially in the fourth issue, where I knew what I wanted to get across. But uh, the fourth issue was probably the toughest one to script because um, I didn't have as much dialogue, you know, in the, mm. in the plot. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I had notes about what was supposed to happen and what I wanted to get across, but I didn't have the dialogue itself. And then I had to work very hard to kind of, again, step away from the keyboard when I could have pushed through and I'll, I'll just have him say this, you know, and instead I would walk away and then wait until the lines would work out well. And I was far enough ahead um, that I, I had that luxury, you know, editorial was not breathing down my neck saying we need it tomorrow or something mm. that's awesome yeah, well I... do we want to wrap with dan or are we going to push him further <laughs> i well, think uh, uh, wait, wait wait leo do you have any other questions oh yeah oh well, well I th why thank you drew uh no I, well i was gonna ask you know uh mm -hmm. dan uh you know, with your your limited, very limited downtime, uh, are you reading anything for fun right now, or are you watching anything? W what's going on? Um, yeah, actually, um, well, we're watching. I mean, like, I don't think anything everybody everybody else is watching. I'm watching Fallout, which I'm enjoying the oh, heck out yeah. of. And now I'm now yeah. I'm back to playing Fallout Four, which I never uh, had a chance to really play before because my son had stolen it. Uh, soon after I got it, uh, and he ran with it, so I'm I'm doing that concurrently. Uh, Shogun has surprised me uh, by being, um, you know, very very cool and uh, enjoying that. Um, uh, I'm reading. Um, geez, what is this? Hang on, let me see. With because uh, I'm quite. I'm reading this Jeff um, Lemire. Um, uh, Omnibus, the Des Descender, 
Have you guys seen this? Like, yeah. this, uh, mm -hmm. you know, robot society, which um, is turning out to be pretty cool. And um, I've read two of the novels um, by the author, and I'm blanking on his name right now, who, um, who wrote Bullet Train, and he wrote like two other um, novels in the sort of Japanese underworld. One was The Mantis, and one was... Um, uh, I'm blanking on the title, but but it's all in the sort of Japanese weird underworld, you know, full of assassins Ooh. and such, which are which are cool. And now, right now, I'm reading a book called Fantastic Land, which is about this um, uh, 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 hurricane that hits like a sort of a Disney World, um, mm -hmm. uh, Universal, you know, Studios Park, and and somehow the park gets cut off, and in the course of a couple of weeks, all the employees who were left there apparently descended into some kind of Lord of the Flies situation, <laughs> which, which on oh, one God. hand feels irrational, but on the other hand, it's being written well enough that I'm kind of buying into it. And, oh, right. Interesting. you know, it's, it's being, it's almost written like in this documentary sort of way where all these, the chapters are interviews with different people who survived the disaster. So it's kind of after the fact, you know, what would, would happen but you're getting insight through the park manager or a kid who is in this tribe and or you know, an uh, uh, emergency responder who came into the park after all the bodies are strung up or something. So it's surprising me in how actually well done it is, um, or at least cap, you know, capture my attention. Mm. So, um, so that's probably way too much to be paying attention to at the same time as everything else, but yeah, it's the only I'm way you cram amazed. it all in. Is that, that a, that's a lot. Like I have a tough time reading one comic book. You're reading like five different books. I'm like, good lord. I like to, to read like I like to read like a comic and a and a novel at the same time. Thank you. Know, you. I, I I kind of get up in the middle of the night and uh and then I I like that balance. I'll read a chapter or an issue of something, hmm. you know, just to put myself back to sleep. But yeah. um, I like that balance. That's the bullet Sako that you were talking about. Is that the bullet train author? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a weird style. You know, it's a weird, it's a it's 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 a very almost like one step removed sort of style. I don't know if that's because it's translated over from the Japanese. It reminds it, it, I had the same question when I read the whole um I recently finished the whole um um three body um uh, three body problem, right? Yep. You know, um all of them, like three body problem, you know, the, the dark forest and uh, death's end, you know, the whole gigantic, you know, set of, of, of books and they're translated from the Chinese, which again, has a diff totally different rhythm, totally different sort of feel. And I don't know if it's, that's just the way it's written as a Chinese author, or if that's a artifact of the translation, but right. um yeah, different storytelling styles. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. But I liked it. I liked it. That show just started on Netflix, Three Body Problem. Yeah. I've yep. been meaning to check it out. That was interesting. I, I having read the books and having list and I listened to the books. Um and and so so many things get conflated in the series and then they got translated over from Chinese characters to oh now that's an English character or now that's this. And I almost like start, and they name them differently. Mm. So then I suddenly realized, oh, he's him. Oh, that's her. You know, mm -hmm. it, for uh -huh. me, it was almost like a puzzle piece as it started to kind of come together on the Netflix one. Um, oh, okay. And uh, in, in a way, but um, the book is really interesting. Uh, and I almost kind of recommend it more than the series because the series was good, but it, it felt like it was landing in more expected places. Yeah. The three books... I don't think I've ever read anything that had more reversals in it, in, in anything, you know, and by that, I mean, you know, you think, oh, that's going to go here. This guy's going to save the fleet or this guy's going to, you know, oh, now they're going to triumph over this. And then suddenly it's like, no, it's all fucked. <laughs> and <then> like, <laughs> or they're all screwed. And, right. and oh, she's going to save. No, she made the wrong decision and it's all going to disaster. And it's just like it. You know, then that always becomes the expectation. Like everything has just become so awful, but it keeps pulling it off, like again and again and again. Um, and you keep leaning into it, saying, "Oh, this is the time they're going to 
they're going to win over the aliens or something. And they nope, mm. that's 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 a complete disaster. Um, <laughs> but uh, have you ever had that happen as an editor, where you're like, oh, I, th I think something needs to change a little bit here. This isn't quite smooth, and then they you're they just come out and throw something just like. I was kind of thinking of this little minor change, but you just changed the entire story and made things bizarre. Um, you know, I mean, my most of my editorial work was was with Epic Comics, so that was the creator-owned division. So, you know, in many ways, I was more a steward and a and a and a shepherd, and sometimes a sherpa. You know, where I was trying to make them achieve their vision, so I wasn't. You know, it wasn't so much always giving back like advice, I, you know, change the story. You know, there were a couple of places where I suggested something to Mark DeMattis and he did not take that well and complained to Archie. <laughs> Good win. <laughs> yeah, right. Which is why Mark intimidated me for many years. And I think Mark's a, a, a prince of a person. But, um, uh, but um, you know, so it was... I was always more surprised because I got to work with so many top people early on with the intensity of talent and how they would craft a story, you know, and how they would put something together seemingly so effortlessly. But I know, you know, it came from a lot of experience and a lot of hard work. I mean, I remember reading Pat Mills's scripts who did martial law and a thousand things for 2000 AD and everything and just, the intensity of his language and the precision of everything. And, you know, it just felt like this guy doesn't do any editing. He just wants to deliver this to me like, like <laughs> this. You know? So like with such a surety. Um, but I, I learned, I think from that um, more than the surprise of like seeing where somebody else is kind of going just because of the things I worked on. I, I only okay. asked, I, I have a, short little thing on I, w I was editing for someone on mm -hmm. a novel series they were working on and there was a continuity point where they he was trying to get somebody into this uh sect of scribes and mm -hmm. um the, the the guy was like just filthy he'd been living homeless and stuff and living hard for a couple of months and this woman grabs him and she's the one who's trying to get him in and i was like you know, when you ha when you have him just show up on the stairs and the only thing he needs to be able to do is read or write, maybe they would have a slightly higher standard, like that he was bathed and wearing something other than rags. And since you've got this woman with, you know, right. and he turned around and was like, oh, yeah, I can see where that would be a thing. And then he turns it around and sends it back to me. And he's like, so I've decided that the reason why they'll take anybody off the street is because um, after they enter service they get a special kind of lobotomy okay and so they can't communicate what they've learned they can only rewrite and so he just like lobotomized an entire cast of people <laughs> because i suggested that they might want to shower first but <laughs> so that was the easy way out yeah, yeah. i mean yeah i probably had more surprises like that in my work in advertising when i was you know, a full on creative director. And, and then I would sometimes, you know, I'd lead projects and you know, you'd have people come back with harebrained or half thought through things, even though you thought you gave them really specific suggestions about something, you know, they come back with like just some, you know, crazy thing that made no sense. And they would just talk loud and fast and wave their hands around and throw a couple pictures in front of you and, and try to get through the meeting. And then you'd be like, there's nothing here. There's no there there. And so, but that's probably the closest. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, right. Okay, then. Well, uh, we'll <laughs> wrap things up. Uh, I, 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 never mind. I was going to go into a long story, but we'll forget it. <laughs> Thanks, Leo. <laughs> long story, Leo. <laughs> Uh, no, no, uh, uh, Dan, you mentioned uh, being a creative director. I, I used to work for an apparel company, and it's not really a long story, but uh, we had this really uh, full of himself uh, graphic designer, mm -hmm. and uh, like he would spend, you know, over a week on a project, you know, just 
drawing the most minute details and he would just pick out the weirdest things like uh the number two on this means you know something from that state you know it, it's right it's like really obtuse like you know yeah it was it was pretty intense uh, the guy was pretty intense but yeah I, I totally see what you're you're going for there yeah some people get their their jaws set in something and they won't let go and you're like yeah but that makes no sense there was a i used to work on a lot of healthcare advertising and you know health drugs yeah. you know have the stupidest names and uh there was this one drug i can't remember what it was for but i think it was called something like agronox like uh, something close to that definitely an ox at the end yep. and this one creative director not creative director copywriter and uh, uh another guy I worked with referred to her, her as a creative sociopath like um <laughs> She got it in her head that the 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 creative idea for this thing should be an ox, right? An ox, you know, because there's a lot of bad metaphors in healthcare advertising, lions yeah. and alligators and sharks, you know, and such. But it should be an ox. It's going to be an ox. It's the Agronox, right? You get it? The Agronox. And she would not let go of this, like for love nor money. And I was like, an ox is a big, dumb beast of burden, right? It's yes, it does its job, but it it's not a lion. It's not the pride, you know, the thing. It's not no. the king of the jungle. It's an ox. It's a stupid idea. Like, I'm not doing it. Like, you want to do it over there? You want to sell to another creative director? I'm doing the website. There will be no oxes on the website. She actually went to the trouble of ordering a big stuffed ox and oh have it God. sent to my office that she came in, <laughs> like, you know, thinking that this was going to win me over. Like, here, it's the Agronox. And it was like, just, it's just. <laughs> I, I I applaud you doubling, tripling, quadrupling down, but boy, this is just a lost cause. But in right. her head, she's probably That's I'm probably thinking about answer. it more than her. Yeah, it was crazy. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, well, well, that's uh, a great story to end it on. I'll tell you that. Yeah, there there you we go. go. There you go. You know, oh, I didn't know those things existed. To agronoxes, yes. Now you got it. Yes. <laughs> You know, yeah, see, I could have see, I could have indulged myself and brought the Agronox in and could have. Oh, that would have been <laughs> that that's something been. for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Dan, uh, totally thank you for your time this evening. Thank um, you guys, such a yeah. fun time to come back. Thank you again. Oh, I absolutely loved having you. Uh, now, uh, where do you like people interacting with you on social media? Um, you know, I, I still hang around Twitter. I hear, uh, Elon is going to, you know, start charging us to show up at his, at his Nazi party, um, which, you know, that'll be the death mm. knell of that for me. Um, uh, cause I won't pay even a dollar a year for the privilege of being his product. Uh, but you know, I'm on there, uh, you know, pretty frequently, uh, DG Chichester there, DG Chichester on Instagram, uh, both easy ways to get to me. My, my newsletter is long fallow and needs to be relaunched under a new identity um so i would say the other two are uh are better uh ways to kind of see what i'm up to and and you know hit me up and say hi awesome and uh uh you know blue sky i mention it every every week uh that's open to everybody if you want to check it out you know i've checked out blue sky i've checked yeah. out threads um i i i think i'm a little more active on threads uh, is blue sky getting more active or uh, what do you think uh, uh it, it, trying to make it more. yeah try, trying, try, to, <laughs> trying to make it more trying to make it the new thing Dan. So, you know, uh -huh. i think he puts the money in stocks uh, yeah. no. <laughs> a product endorsement you, you know yeah. did you have any other conventions you were going to be coming to um i will be at um well, we know i won't be at terrific uh, sadly i will be at um oklahoma city for galaxy con at the end of may i will be at um Hershey uh, at the end of June. I will be at uh, San Jose uh, late or not late August, mid August. And then I will be at Dragon Con at, um, I think that's the end of August. So um, that will, I uh, want to do a Dragon Con sometime. Occupy it's... most of my summer. Okay. So, and there were, there were a couple others, but I, they, they were two on top of things. So I, I, I had to decline, um, you know, those. That's been a mess lately. There's just too many cons, and they're all trying to get prime dates for things, and then people yeah, get people booked and and then you and then you know you yeah you're running about and I and I like cons. You know, people are oh, how did you do? How did you do? I mean, if I make a couple of dollars, that's nice. But I really kind of go to meet people, 
and and it's not a I haven't lost money on it on anything you know they 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 cover my my mm. travel expenses uh, which is you know very nice but um if I go to too many of them it co that will cost me money because then I got to take time off for my day job so that that can't happen <laughs> of course <laughs> Uh, well, uh, thank you again for your time tonight, Dan. Thank you, and, guys. Yeah. yeah, this has been fun. Seriously. Totally. Thank you, and uh, uh, like uh, Carrie mentioned in the beginning, we're recording all these individually. So if you hit the leave studio button on the bottom, it'll, it'll prompt you to go to an uploads page. I will leave uh, it until it's uploaded. Yep. Perfect. It'll work. Yep. Awesome. I'll be a good good citizen. All right, folks. Mm -hmm. Take care. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Be well. Thank you for coming back. Be well. Thank you, Dan. Be well. Bye bye. That was and awesome. then there was four. I love him. He is so wonderful. Yeah. We know, Gary. <laughs> you fan, you <laughs> fan girl about him the way Leo fanboyed about Mark Wade. Is there uh, anything wrong with that, though? No, oh, no, no, nothing wrong with no, that. No one, you know? no, whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on, hold on. Time out. No one said anything wrong. It's just obvious. Like if, like Freddie. Williams the third came on, Jar Jar would go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Are you kidding me? On that. that it's the same way I lost my shit when Tony Harris was on. I'm we all I'm have for him to be announced at Terrific Con, goddammit. <laughs> oh yeah. It, Jeremy, I swear I gotta probably hear you yelling dibs from oh. where I'm at. <laughs> like, well, and, uh, and and uh, you know, uh I think you're getting at Drew like, you know, these are all awesome guests, you know. Uh we may have our favorites, but you know, we can, you know, get great stories from everybody. I mm -hmm. I just want to point out I really like what the hell is going on with this polybagging red band trailer bullshit with these 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 like, oh, this issue is so dark. We've got a poly. I'm like, what about when they put the Harley Quinn issue out that had the marijuana scent on it? I thought right. that was one of the funniest. Yeah, they they put a a Harley. Uh, let me see if no, I can find that it. was Google it. Harley. No, Quinn that marijuana. was like that was like that issue of Batman Damned where everybody lost their mind. It was like, hey, look, it's Bruce Wayne's Ding Dong. I'm like, yep. And then now that's a collector item, and nobody cared. <laughs> well, they pulled it from the shelf right away. Yeah, Nobody they did. Cares. Well, they, 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 um, no, because I remember they did something similar like that with Spider Man Rain. They were like, oh, no, that's Peter Parker's actual web shooter. We can't show that. I'm just like, I can't with you guys. <laughs> like, what do you think they have underneath all that underwear? Like, it's not dogma. They're not anatomically correct like a Ken doll. Come on. All right. Well, listen, we've bantered enough. There's yep. a lot to cover. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to get through this as fast as possible. Uh, but um, we... we I, I'm just going to hit the button. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I was about to I, say, I've asked. I, I, uh, uh, I petered out. Okay, here we go. I don't know. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Variant Watch. I'm, I'm going to be your Variant Lifeguard, Drew, and we're going to be covering some of the ridiculousness that's accumulated from these last two times. This is me doing my Jeremy impression. It's clearly working. Um, all right. So let's let's bang these out. For a nap. Good Lord. You know what? Yeah. You're, you're, you're always ready for a nap, okay? Like a ginger I, cat. Well, weed nap. I, all right. I, I'm right there where, yeah, I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also exhausted. So what I'm hearing is we three men will nap while Carrie will stay up and protect the tombs. Yep. There you go. Like Good a idea. gothic girl, like a gothic girl Renfield. You know? Oh, she slept all day, so god damn it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's well listen, we sleep and then it's suddenly her turn. All right. So <laughs> uh back to this because kids, we haven't got enough. So now more blood hunt variant covers and, and correct me if i'm wrong but this is the kevin eastman wolverine blood hunt cover this is um this is that and this is also his 
his uh, his frequent collaborator uh, Tom Waltz's first um, Marvel work. This is his Marvel debut. So uh, yeah, uh -huh. Kevin Eastman wanted to make him feel at home. So June fifth, that will be there. Okay. So seems huh. pretty cool. And then following that, uh, Blood Hunt variant cover two. That is the Wolverine uh, <clears throat> Blood Hunt two variant, um, which I believe is it's in June, June or July. So it feels like a jolting tale of terror. Yeah, this is a this is what's called a bloody homage variant cover. To give a terrifying hint of the savagery awaiting readers. The, the artist there is Logan Lubera. Uh, that's the bloody homage variant cover. And moving on. Thank you very much. Hello, Cap. Captain America. Carrie, I believe these are the variant for the Spider-Man. Yes, they are. Yes, so... As we know, it's been officially 40 years since Peter Parker got a backup costume while he was dealing with the events of Secret Wars and found out it's not a suit. It's a symbiote. Uh, celebrating 40 years of the black costume, we will have uh, variant, co variant cover versions of some of the best and greatest of the Marvel Universe with the black costume variant covers this May. 23 covers across all of Marvel's hottest series. See your favorites heat up. Cap, Iron Man, Miss Marvel, Hulk. They're there. 23 of them. That's all I got to say. We aren't showing all of them. Obviously. No, they no we got up yet. No, but there was this, uh, which one was Peach Momoko? Uh, you, you just passed it. Spider Woman. Right there. That one is pretty great, I'm not gonna lie. And the first one was Lionel Francis U, and I like that quite as well too, Cap. Well, it's it's Lionel Francis U. Yeah. Of course you're gonna like yeah. that. Guy knows he's doing. All right, so yeah. symbiotes 40 years. Keep it gooey. All right. Oh. Next. All right, so next on the DC side, uh, DC has decided that they're going to honor legendary artist Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, who will be at Trificon, everybody. Yeah. Um, yes, they are honoring him with a series of variants covers. So this is through July of this year, uh, through all their titles. Um, I mean, he's been drawing DC Comics since 1975. So he's more, he's really most known for his work on the publisher's style guides. So, you know, like the 1982 DC comic style guide. Um, so these will be going through all of July. So we're we'll definitely going to be able to ask him about it come uh, Trificon in August. But I've met this man. He is such a sweetheart. He's very great with fans. He's such a talented person. So I'm just glad DC in some small part is showing him his due. He did so, the yeah. Untold Legend of Batman as well, right? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, when are these coming out? Uh, this would be July. July. Okay. Yep. I, I I will be getting all of these. Whoa. <laughs> really? I, can't I think imagine. so. There's probably Mr. More Retro. Than come on. Me. All right. And next. Bing. Yes. So this know. is. Covers Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch, her new series is coming out. Uh, Steve Orlando, who did uh, the latest series, is back for another time. He's gonna be joined with X Men Red artist Jacobo Camig Camagni. Um, so you got a bunch of beautiful variant covers, um, right there, but especially uh, a classic poster art by uh so that's jenny for song is the first one and i believe the second one that one there that's going to be a foil variant by the legendary p craig russell Foiled who is an amazing talent so trust me that's a great issue so. they're doing a lot of foil lately 
Yeah. 90s are back. Embossed. I want it fully embossed foil variant. I'm for it. Maybe for Christmas, Jar. Everything All right. I want. I want I want it. Bring it back. All right. So <laughs> and then since there of course will be new X Force, that means there'll be X Force variants. So as we know, um Forge is creating uh, X Force, which is the off the books um, team. So uh, you have artist uh, Clayton Crane is returning to the world of X Force. So you have the character variant covers. So you already saw the first one that was Crane with Forge. Then you had um, Mahudmid Asrar is doing Betsy Braddock and Rachel Summers in action. So that's right there. And then Tony Daniel, who we, uh, that's Clayton Crane. Yeah. And then you have Tony Daniel right there, assembling the whole squad. Former new X-Men leader, Surge. You got uh, the who's the mastermind behind X-Force, Sage and Tank, um, among others. So, of course, like I said before, this will get another, spo uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, this will get a foil cover, and that's right there by David Nakayama, highlighting the issue's guest star, Wade Wilson himself, everyone. Deadpool bunny. Yep. So that, so keep an eye out for that. That'll be out this, this summer. So then this, because we haven't heard something from Stormbreakers. So in connection to Ghost Rider Wolverine's Weapon of Vengeance, and as we know, Helverine is going to be a short miniseries. Uh, that one created by uh, Benjamin Percy and Julius Ohada. So as that's coming back, Stormbreakers is doing hellish designs for a bunch of Marvel heroes. So these are going to be depicted, possessed versions of Black Cat, Captain America, Carnage, Daredevil, uh, Wolverine, that's Laura Kinney, Spider-Punk, Spider-Man 2099, and the New Moon Knight. All there. Check that shit out. They're all Ghost rider They're all, yeah, think Ghost rider e possessed Oh. Ah. Pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. It's something they oh. haven't thrown into the mix very much. Carrie, what do you, Carrie? What's your two cents on this? Um. Okay. Love. Back one more. I mean, they venomize everybody. Why not go Schreider? Yeah, I, I, I love the Catwoman one. That was pretty cool. Um, Catwoman. I, that's. Uh, I think that's Spider Gwen. Oh, is that Spider Gwen? Or, is that Spider Gwen or is that? Uh, I thought it was Black Cat. Oh no no. Oh, Black Cat. No, Hat? that's. No, that is black. No, I think that I don't know because it's oh, oh, it says this amazing Spider Man number 49. Yeah, that's wow. black cat. My bad. No, you're right, oh. Carrie. That's black cat. All right. Well, um, I, th I think she looks quite nice. I think I like the whole series of them, but it's kind of weird to have it all based off of one. I don't know. The things that they decide that they're going to do variant covers in honor of is weird to me, but it's a cool one. I guess if you're gonna do it, and this Thanks time when I saw Stormbreakers, I didn't cry because I was doing the very. I was like, "Oh, good, I'm gonna have another 30. And it was like, "Oh no, there's only eight. That's there amazing. You go. Only. I'm good with that. Only. All right, so that is all the variant covers for this week. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> so no, now on to. Done. Uh, actually, hold on. Uh, since we just, uh, you know what? I can't find it right now. Uh, Carrie, did you see that they're releasing a new, uh, Ghost Rider Hasbro figure? Ooh. No. It looks really badass. Where uh, is it, Leo? Don't just tell us about us. Tell don't, us. No, hold, don't hold, indulge. Hold don't, on. Don't indulge the collector. Hold Show on. me, big guy. Come on. Uh, hold on. I, it might be on Hasbro Pulse. Let me just. Check. Are you saying, Leo? Are you having trouble? Are you saying your you feel like your skull's on fire? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but like the way they like the even the motorcycle is like posable with like flames dripping off is really badass. Wow! Look, 
Carrie's giving that. Ooh, I might shut up and 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 take this money. Uh, the like, the last one that I've seen that has really made me drool. I can't remember his name, but he does everything in like copper casting, and it's like twelve hundred dollars. So I'm like, yeah, I'll get that never. But, I look at statues just in dream about them. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that that looks nice. A don't have the money. B oh, where the hell oh. am I going to put that thing? Hold on. Exactly. I found it. The life size Megan doll. That's oh. freaky. I I still I, am very confused by that movie. Like it, it was supposed to be a horror story, but like I felt bad for the doll. Like I was just like the the, the kind of I, I don't remember it fully, but like I remember feeling bad for the doll. Okay, and on that note, Leo, do you have a photo of the toy? Yes, I'm trying to pull it up right now. Hold on. He's down one screen. Hold so on. Two. Yeah. I thought I was going to have to sing the theme for the news segment. You know. Do it, Drew. No, I can't. <laughs> Okay, I'm only saving gonna... my voice for for Splash Pages the musical. Wow, Carrie, that's that's right for you. I don't know. That looks like it's pooping fire. <laughs> yeah, the flames are a little smooth. It's it's definitely going off the Solter Solterius cover, but I don't know. I th I think I want more. To my flame than the I, I want more rigidness to my flame and like it's a little flat for me i mean it's cool it, it, it's very cool looking yeah but, uh, it looks well, better from that angle yeah yeah that, that was definitely better the wheel on the other side just looks kind of, you know like i like like i don't like a straight cape you like the like capes that kind of whoosh out so that's yeah. kind of how i am with my fire and stuff you need to have it be well, I think it I think it comes with like different parts so you can you know have you know it's like different fire add-ons potentially oh. a flame that decision oh that's a conundrum so <laughs> the news uh the 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 what Drew's news, Drew's news, exciting tales, fresh comic views, in the pages, heroes fly, villains plot under the sky, from Gotham's dark to Metropolis views, we cover stories old and new. Drew's news, Drew's news, your daily source for comic clues, join the fun, it's a heroic cruise, in the world of Drew's comic news. <laughs> <laughs> turned into one of those things from Sesame Street, uh, meet, 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 meet. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, it's our news. <laughs> uh, okay, right. who's up first? Yeah, I guess she'll just hang out in the corner. Uh, that would be me. And oh, with this one, we're gonna start the news. Uh, this is sad. Um, I I have the first two news stories. Uh, because they're both sad. Um. First of all, shown here, um, after an almost three-year battle with lupus, cover artist Jeffrey Varegi has passed away. Um, on April 12th, he had an unexpected heart attack that he did not recover from. Uh, when he was still working, he created covers for Marvel, IDW, and Valiant Comics. And he used a style that he dubbed Salish Geek, in which he meshed together form line designs. He based a lot of his works on his native background and was the cover artist for Marvel's first Native American hero, Red Wolf. Uh, he's also known for his amazing murals, which can be found around Seattle and in the Smithsonian. And currently, um, as he spent over two and a half years in the hospital struggling with uh, the lupus, uh, there's a GoFundMe going to help cover his medical expenses for his family. Um, there, it's actually doing pretty well, but any bit more could help, and, you know, would go a long way to help this hero that we had that we have now lost. But so we're going to keep that running just in case you guys want to get it. And then if you want to go on to the next one, 
We have, um, sadly, iconic underground indie comic artist Trina Roberts also passed away. Uh, this was on April 10th at the age of 85. Uh, she was very involved in getting women involved in comics and was the first female artist to draw Wonder Woman. Beyond her art, she also wrote nonfiction novels about females in the comic book industry and was a big part of the 1960s music scene, earning a mention in Joni Mitchell's Lady of the Canyon, Ladies of the Canyon, and she ran a clothing store at that time. So we've got Very this cool. some some great inspiration. Yes, yeah, so the person who drew for the first Native American hero for Marvel and one of the strongest powers behind feminine power in comic books. Uh, we've lost them both in a short period of time. So I, our hearts and love go out to their families and everything. And thank you for everything you've given us. Absolutely. Our, our world, anytime we lose someone, our, our comic world is just a little less bright. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. They were there in the first place. Exactly. We, we, we did a news article about uh, Trina recently, I believe, where she just retired shortly ago. No, I think uh, you're thinking of that other DC artist, uh, Ramona. Ramona. Oh, yes. My bad. They, they were both Wonder Woman artists, though, I think. Uh, no, yeah. she, the, no? The, the, the Ramona. No, she was an Aquaman, but she oh, did do some. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. but she did do some. I think she did. She was very cover heavy. I remember. Yeah, she did a lot of covers. So that's, I think, what you're thinking of, Leo. But point being yeah. is, she passed away shortly after she announced her retirement. So it was very sad. Yep. yep. They'll all be missed. Yes. Yes, very much so. Yep. Indeed. Well, uh, we'll move on to Black Widow. I believe this one is Moa. And uh, so uh, Natasha Romanoff, if you didn't know, uh, that's that's the Black Widow. Uh, she, I believe she was recently venomized. And uh, so, yeah, so she's going to be keeping the suit. Uh, we're going to be seeing Black Widow Venomous number one. It's going to be written by Erica Schultz and illustrated by Luciano Vachicchio. And it's a one shot and it delves into Natasha's newfound symbiotic bond, unleashing her full potential as a symbiotic warrior. So uh, Natasha didn't plan on bonding with the alien symbiote, but as a skilled spy, she knows how to use any tool at her disposal. Uh, the uh, Black Widow Venomous number one hits shelves July 31st, and it's going to be having a striking cover, as you can see here, by Lyrics. It's gorgeous. She doesn't oh. miss leg day. Nope, not at all. Good Lord, her legs are the size of my whole body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, this, and she... And I guess it's clear she's going to play a role in the upcoming uh, Venom War that Jar mm. had announced, uh, I think, a week or two ago. So, yeah, this is, this is going to be the lead up to Venom War. Oh, God. Where we're getting more and more Venom. Yeah, uh, pass. Next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is me. Ultimate Spider Man. Yeah. I wonder who could have this story. Hmm. You know what, Jar? Uh, I, 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 I don't think it's called Jar Jar's News. So if you want to do this, go for it. Jar Jar, Jar Jar. It doesn't have the right, it's the same uh, zing. Jar's News, Jar's News. No. No. Yeah, it's it's got to be Drew's News. Drew's News. We got a jar full of news? Jar I don't full know. Of news. Get out. Uh, <laughs> why do you right. both just fuck off all right so um because coverage has just been so great and the ultimate universe is really killing it still um they have announced all the stories that will be uh showing up in july of this year so the first one we have there is ultimate spider-man issue seven where we see that Green Goblin and Spider-Man's uh, battle uh, against the Kingpin. 
um, basically shows that these two guys are not as ready as they thought to reshape the world. Um, the goblin and the spider uh, get to work while Ben and Jonah, uh, who, as, as you might remember, have their own publishing company now, work on the truth. And this and all especially gets even bigger when Tony Stark checks in on Peter Parker in person. So if you fall in Ultimate Universe, you know that that's definitely not a good thing. So that's uh, that will be out July 3rd. So just in time for the holiday. Ultimates 2 by Dennis Camp and Juan for Gary. Um, apparently, uh, we see Captain America dealing with more and more of the maker's decisions. Um, technically taking a trip to the White House. Uh, leading to a brawl between the villain known as Midas and his young band of freedom fighters. But apparently Midas holds a superhuman hostage as a power source. And we discover, apparently, what is the dark history of the United States of America in Earth 6160. Is so all of that on July 10th, everyone. Next. Don't tell me there's a map behind the uh, Declaration of Independence. Hold oh, a second, hold oh, a second. Treasure. Oh, all right. The national go. treasure. <laughs> uh, Ultimate X-Men 5, again, by uh, written and Momoko. drawn by Peach Momoko. Um, Momoko. The new group of mutants uh, are s essentially still growing, as we find May Storm is not the only mutant of electrical powers, as Noriko Ishida, a.k.a. Uh, as we know, Surge from the X-Men is uh, showing up. So we're going to have more and more of the growing team there. We've already seen Armor. We've already seen Maystorm show up. We know that uh, Nico, who is the um, the spellcaster from the group, run the Runaways, will be showing up in the book. I believe that's issue three. So Surge is just the latest addition to Pichamoko's growing team of X of future X Men, so, uh, but of course the important thing is is we're going to see that this summer festival turned haunted hell ride, um, we're going to find out the face of the true villain that's been haunting uh, armor all this time. So that is on July seventeenth, and then we may get at least, but at least here. what we may get to meet her next year, not oh, this year, sadly. And then last but not least, uh, Ultimate Black Panther um, by Brian Hill, Carlos Nieto, and Stefano Caselli is doing the cover. We're going to finally have, um, basically it's going to be Black Panther versus Moon Knight. So you're going to have both forces of Moon Knight. That's Ka, uh, Ra, and Khonshu uh, versus T'Challa. And we're going to see essentially uh, what's what as this basic battle continues versus Wakanda and uh, yeah, and the hmm. kingdoms of the upper and lower kingdom. I know this so, is the ultimate universe. It just seems a little like unevenly matched. Then again, but you, know. but Jar, you also have to remember T'Challa has on his side Killmonger and Storm. Okay. Oh, so, that makes yeah. a little more. Or yeah, that makes it a little more even. But yeah, time. so that's on sale July 24th. Uh, those are the only ultimate titles announced, but if it continues to sell as well as it is, we can be sure that there's definitely going to see more. So stay tuned, everybody, and order your copies of your local LCS because they are selling out like hotcakes. Yes. Do hotcakes awesome. really sell out that much? Probably they, they used to, yeah. Probably, yeah, they, probably nowadays. No, I mean, yeah, they cost way too much. When's the last time you seen an IHOP? IHOP, don't they sell hotcakes at, at McDonald's? McDonald's? Yeah, but McDonald's has gone up in price. Yeah. I'd rather just make my own. Thank you. <laughs> and hearing, next, Leo, hearing uh, you read all those really in depth summaries reminded me of that. 
the little scene in the Lost Boys when they're talking and it's like, oh, a TV guide. You, do you have, where's the TV? Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV if you read the TV guide. Because it's like, you know, they pretty much tell you everything that's going to happen in the comic except the dialogue. Mm. But, sorry. <laughs> Truth well, well then you I, just I, need previews. What, so well, who's next? To previews? Okay. Uh, I have to tell you, I'm really excited for this one. Let's see if I can get the correct screen to pop up. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh, that's me. Yeah. I I I I, I need this in my you life. Threw me out of order. I think. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I make a list and post it on the thing. Oh things. man, where am I? Oh, uh, you know, splash okay, page. crossover. <laughs> where am I? Uh, unprecedented, unprecedented crossover event. Marvel and Disney are joining forces to bring. This makes so much sense w when you hear about it. What if Donald Duck became Wolverine number one? Slated for release this July, revealed at the Bologna Children's Book Fair in Italy. I hope I'm saying that right. It says Bologna. That's how You're I. You're doing fine, Bologna. buddy. Uh, uh, was it, was that his first name? It, it is Oscar <laughs> then Meyer. <laughs> and you were saying one jar <laughs> a special one shot celebrates the milestone years of both Donald duck and Wolverine merging their iconic tales into a thrilling adventure written by acclaimed Disney comic creator, Luca Barbary and illustrated by artist Giada Persinoto. This unique collaboration promises to blend the heart, humor, and epic rage of both Donald Duck and Wolverine. Following in the footsteps of previous successful collaborations between Marvel and Disney, this comic marks yet another exciting crossover event for fans to enjoy. Storyline introduces Donald, Wolverine, and explores a wild adventure inspired by Wolverine's famous old man Logan art. Set in the near future where chaos reigns supreme, Duckbird is, Duckburg is transformed into a superhero-less wasteland by villainous Pete Skull. That, that, that is so cool. On, only old Donald Duck, who has retired from battling villains to enjoy naps in his grandma's apple pie, can stand against the threat. However, when Mickey, Hawkeye, and Goofy Hulk come seeking his help, Wolverine Donald faces a dilemma. Embrace his heroic past one last time or succumb to the comfort of retirement. Luca Barbary shared insights into emerging these seemingly desperate or disparate characters, noting their shared traits of hot tempers, bad luck, and unwavering courage in the face of adversity. Meanwhile, Giada Persinito expressed delight in adapting Wolverine's iconic sideburns to fit Donald Duck's character, finding unexpected synergy between the two. I, I I'm with you, Leo. This this sounds fun. This this is this is comic books. Oh hell yeah! When you no longer have to think about stuff. Yep, exactly. Absolutely love it. And the first and third cover, I absolutely love. Uh, that Peach Momoko cover is pretty good too. That yeah. one's right there. That's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, um, All right. I'm so, buying. Yep. Not yeah, all. Of them. I, I that feel one like I'm you. Skipping. I feel like Jar. <laughs> this and the in um the Infinity Dime are are big. Oh big my ones god. Here. Yeah. And the best part is if you buy if you get that you can get signed by Jason Aaron at the con. Oh yeah, that's mm. a freaking great idea. Ooh. There's Drew. Yeah. Yep. I got. Hey, listen. You think I, the oh. only thing I got to handle on is the news? Ah yes, Miller World. Millar yeah. World. No, Miller. Miller. <laughs> we we'll finally get it right from the first shot, Leo, and you got to screw us up. <laughs> he does it just to piss us off. Jackass. So Miller World is adding two new titles to their um, to their run. Uh, Nightclub 2 and Prodigy Slaves of Mars. Uh, Nightclub is going to feature artists Juan and Ramirez and Fabiana Mas Mascu, um, and it's going to launch on August 21st. It's going to be a six-issue series picking up with the vampire superheroes where they left off back in 2023. Um, there's been some fallout, and they need to see if the drama can 
be, can overcome for the sake of the team. Um, issue number one features the main cover art from Ramirez with a black and white variant, as well as a variant from the prolific team of artist Jay Lee and colorist Jun Chung. It's right there. That's mm-hmm. that's the Jay Lee cover right there. Yeah, it is. Creepy. And then, yeah, and then Prodigy, Slaves of Mars, is going to feature art by Stefano Landini from Hellbra- Hellblazer and Miller World alumna Michelle Serac scorn and will be released on August 7th. Uh, Miller's, Miller says of Prodigy that he is his favorite character he has written to date. He's kind of a combination of Sherlock Holmes with a taste of Indiana Jones and Bruce Wayne. And he hopes that this combination of characters is going to open the door to a lot of different stories being able to be written about him. So, yeah. Get ready for August is going to be hitting nice there. Mm. 7th awesome. the yeah, and you can go back and catch up on the first run of Nightclub so you know what's coming on with this series. Sounds good. Yep, and that's all I got in those, so there we go. It's you. Uh, no, it's Wolverine. Yep. It is Wolverine. <laughs> and that's uh, Mr. Sinister. Yeah, okay, so Life of Wolverine number one. So uh, get ready to take a Deep dive into the life of Wolverine this July with Life of Wolverine number one. So this is going to be a one shot in is brought to you by Jim Zub and Ramon Box. And it presents Wolverine's journey in chronological order. So the official synopsis is Wolverine has been mind wiped, manipulated and giving false memories so many times, but... What is the truth of his long life now as a journey into his own past becomes paramount to the survival of mutant kind? Delve into the true story of Logan's life from his earliest days in the late 1800s to the many wars he's fought alongside comrades like Captain America and Sabretooth to the Weapon X procedures that changed his life forever, his days on the X-Men and more. All in continuity. This includes some adventures and links to the past never before revealed, giving the most complete picture of Wolverine's history ever assembled. So this is going to be a one shot and it's going to give you the entire history of Wolverine. Or Weapon X or Logan. One shot. Is, and Chris is, Claremont uh, isn't writing it. I'm, I'm yeah, impressed. Right? I know, I know. It says it's a one shot, so we'll we'll see. It must be an oversized. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I forgot the page count, but it's definitely a larger issue. Eighty page giant. Yeah, I think it's larger than that, but we'll see. Oh wow! Yeah. Huge book. Okay, oh, and good. this goes back to me. I kind of got things a little better about order. So, um, this is, uh, Pulp Pope, Pulp Pope to the art of Paul Pope. And it's hard to say, um, it's going to be released at your local comic book store on October 9th and in bookstores on the 15th. And this is the eagerly anticipated release to 2006's Pulp Pope. And it's going to be a 338 page of work by the five-time Eisner award-winning artist. Um, this art includes work in fashion, comics, album art, silk screens, and some of his own personal work, and much of it has never been seen before. It is a collection and reflection on his career as a pop artist. And I was going to try to list off a couple things, and I'm just not rewriting. So Boom Studios bio about Paul Pope is uh, he was born in 1970. He is an American artist and designer living and working in New York. Um, He has been working primarily in comics and screen printing since the early 90s, but has also done a number of projects with Italian fashion label Diesel Industries and in the U.S. with DKNY. His recent collaborations with Errolson Hugh, acronym for Nike's AF1 debuted spring 2017, and his media and clients include LucasArts, NBC, Disney, Cartoon Network, Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Condé Nast, 
Kandesha in Japan, Sapporo in Japan, Dark Art Editions in France, EMI Canada, The Grateful Dead Estate, and the British Film Institute. Um, his iconic Batman Year 100, a science fiction take on the classic Batman origin tale, appears frequently on many top 10 Batman story lists. In 2010, he was recognized as a master artist by the American Council of the Arts, and his short science fiction comic strip Strange Adventures through DT Com through DC Comics, an homage to the Flash Gordon serials of the 30s, won the coveted National Cartoonist Society Rubin Award for the Best Comic Book of the Year. And there's mentioned before, he has won five Eisner so far. So this is going to be hitting um, your LCS on the 9th, but you can also pick it up in bookstores on the 15th, and you will also be able to get it digitally as well on such devices as your Kindle through Amazon. And that will be out on the 15th. Then. So look forward to this. I, I love getting a chance to see artists work, especially stuff they haven't necessarily shared. And since he has such a huge range of different things that he's releasing here, you know, it's not just the comic, just this, it's all sorts of stuff. I think it should be, I, I think it's going to be worth checking out. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Next up. Bowling. Bowling. Is this yeah. you again, Gary? No. Nope. Oh, this is totally me. Oh. Like Mignola. This feels, this feels, oh, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> totally true. So, because Mike Mignola isn't busy enough, he has announced a new project that he's working on uh, mm -hmm. that he's doing with his one of his frequent collaborators now, uh, Ben Steinwick, uh, Bowling with Corpses and Other Strange Tales from Lands Unknown. Uh, released through Dark Horse. It's the first book from his new imprint, Curious Objects. Um, this is from their new Lands Unknown universe, which is an, and this will be an anthology of folklore-inspired fantasy tales written and illustrated by Mignola. Um, that explains the shared universe he's co-creating with, St with Stenbeck. Um, I think there's another thing. Um, so apparently, according to Mignola, it started with an Italian folktale about a, bowl, a boy who goes bowling with corpses. Um, so essentially, it started from there, and then before he knew it, he was creating a brand new world uh, just centuries ago with tons more gods and monsters. Um, Stenbeck is working on other books within this new imprint. Um, meanwhile, as we know, Mignola has still been very busy with stories for, um, for Hellboy. He co-created the Outerverse universe with, uh, on one of his other, uh, collaborators, uh, Christopher Golan, Golden, and he co-created a series of Gothic mysteries with Warwick Johnson Caldwell, other projects. And, um, yeah, this is just going to be amazing. Um, so you have written and drawn by Mignola, colored by Dave, his longtime collaborator, Dave Stewart, lettered by Clem Robbins. It's set for release in bookstores November 5th and in comic shops on November 6th. Hmm. And if you're loving this, definitely make sure you keep an eye out because uh, the, as we know, Hellboy the Crooked Man um, will be out, uh, I want to say sometime I don't know if soon is the word, but definitely within the next couple of years, uh, where Mignola is going to be co-writing that script with Christopher Golden. So I have a feeling this is going to be really great. Um, either way, super pumped for this. I love anything Mignola does. So this is going to be dope as hell. What? You love anything Mignola? Yeah. I know, Leo. Just like how you love anything Lee Bermejo does. <laughs> so. Okay. Oh, well, this is Jar. This is Misery. No, uh, this, well, it is Misery. Um, <laughs> Image Comics unveils new series, Misery, in the Spawn universe. Uh, Image Comics has revealed the upcoming launch of Misery, a four-issue series set within the Spawn universe, penned by Todd McFarlane and brought to life by artist Seisman Kudronsky. The series is slated for release in June. Uh, centers on Cyan Fitzgerald, a pivotal character. It, it's Spawn's daughter. Um, originally introduced during San Diego Comic Con 2023, it delves into the challenges faced by teenager Cyan 
or oh God, I'm saying her name wrong. Fitzgerald. Cyan. Todd, yeah, Cyan Fitzgerald, Todd McFarland. The, I can hear it being said wrong. I'm just like, you're saying that wrong. The creator shared his inspiration for the series, stating, as a father of two daughters witnessing their journey into womanhood, I couldn't help but imagine the impact of losing a significant parent parental figure, especially during such formative years. This series explores the repercussions of such a loss on a young person's life, blending themes of personal growth with elements of chilling horror. So now a 17-year-old, Cyan navigates life following the tragic loss of her mother, Wanda, whose character served as the catalyst for Spawn's creation. As Cyan grapples with grief and seeks her path, she discovers latent abilities surfacing within her, gifting her with uh, newfound powers of healing. Cyan finds herself uh, torn between embracing her abilities and distancing herself from loved ones just when she needs their support the most. So it's pretty intense, but I, I, I myself, I don't know if I would buy it. it are, are we getting too much spawn these days? Okay, thank you, because I had the same thought. Yeah. Like, like this is a little much. It is. It, like, there's like five or six new spawn series starting in the spawn universe. Like, yeah. well, I, it, listen, Jar. As a, as a longtime image fan like you, who remembers back when Spawn first dropped and how it changed mm. the game, you know, it's not. It was nice fleshing out that universe, but now I feel like it's too much. It's it's all of that success is, it's kind of marvelizing it. Yeah. It's oh, this is great. Let's run this into the ground, and we're beating. And it's really nice that there's yeah. so many Spawn books out, but you know, just because there's so many, you know, you got to get worried. Worse. Like there's so many. If you feel like the quality is going to start dipping, uh, yeah, I mean, and he's taking on this one, I believe himself. So uh, oh. it, it's it's a lot on one writer. I don't know. Mm. We shall see, we'll see. I guess. I mean, the artwork looks pretty fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's oh. uh, it's McFarlane artwork, right? Is it? I, I didn't see. You didn't talk about in the article who was doing the art, but possibly it's not McFarlane on artwork. No, it's it's um, Jar. It's si it's Simon Kudransky. They collaborated oh, yeah, back during that. the Jim Downing era. Yes, it okay. did say that. You are right. <laughs> well, we have entered the Spawniverse. Yeah, man, no we're whipping this one. Yeah, now I'm, I'm like, all right. all right, what's next? The oh, Witcher. Yes. yes, I was actually very excited to hear this because this sounds awesome. Interesting. So, um, while the the future of the Witcher live action is still up in the air, as in where it's going to go. Uh, he will be returning to Dark Horse with a limited series, creating collaboration with video games, uh, Project Red. Uh, the new story titled Witcher Wild Animals, Gerald of Rivia finds himself lost in a new world of threats and new monsters to hunt down. Um, this will be a four-issue series written by CD Project Red um, uh, narrative director Bartosz Sizdebor. And with art by Ukrainian artist Natalia Rekina in her U.S. comic debut, uh, along with the colors by Patricio Del, Del Peck and Hassan Asman El Hau. Um, it has a main cover by um, Rekina and variants by Manuel Fio, Sarah Keepin, and Matt Smith. So the synopsis is, uh, fan favorite Witcher, Gerald, is no stranger to jobs gone wrong, but washing ashore on a strange new land forces him in conflict between the hunters who took him in and the mysterious clan known to kill humans. Where man and creature coexist, there's an unspoken rule, one where the skills of a Witcher go beyond killing monsters. So this goes on sale in September. I That cover right behind there is my favorite one out of all of them. And having never played the video games, but thoroughly enjoyed what... Uh, I only played uh, Henry three. Cavill brought to The Witcher. I definitely want to check this out. 
Yeah, I Def- only played part three, and it was great. Yeah, same here. I only played part three. Yeah, I agree. Really, really good. The the book is supposed to be pretty phenomenal, too. Yeah, that's There's what I've heard. Book. Definitely a lot of lore to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next Legendary. up. Oh, this one's me. Okay, I'll try to do the pictures and the story at the same time. Let me pull up my notes. I will try. I will try. Leo. Leo. (laughs) No, it's Robin. It's Robin. It's Robin. Robin. (laughs) Okay, so uh, Robin lives in a new DC series uh, in an alternate part of uh, real comic book history. So coming out in July, uh, if you remember, uh, DC did the, uh, what was they calling it? The Fossimile? Fossimile. Uh, Fossimile where, uh, of Batman 428, where uh, uh, Robin lived through the Joker's attack. Well, they're doing a four-part series. Uh, Let me see if I can find the actual synopsis here. So continuing this classic and controversial story following in the footsteps footsteps of Batman 428, Creators Jim Starlin and Jim Aparo, two creators uh, they greatly admire, uh, has been both a challenge and a joy, Dematis said uh, in a statement to the publisher. This is a great opportunity to tell a story that's big on action, but also takes a very deep dive into the heads of our main characters as we ponder what would have happened if Jason Todd had survived the Joker's brutal attack And having a master like Rick Leonardi bringing it to life visually, he couldn't ask for anything more. So, uh, Dematis promises a story packed with action, uh, deep character exploration. It's going to be a four-part series that continues after 428 with written by uh, J.M. DiMatteis with art by Rick Leonardi. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, one of the things... uh, that I read, uh, they were picked because they were both active in the 80s and 90s. So they want to bring some of that, you know, uh, feel from the 80s and 90s. The 90s are back. Yeah. Oh, and, that's a beautiful Mignola cover. That yeah. is. That was in uh, 423, you said? Uh, 428. It was, uh, yeah. It was the the fake edition, essentially, where Jason lives. Um, yeah, they, Jar, they released it last year. Wow. Oh. Yeah, it was supposed to, I think it was, they announced it like November, December last year. Yeah. That they were going to do it, and they just decided, let's do a four-issue miniseries where he didn't die. And then you have two guys who are still very much working in comics in the 80s and 90s to give it that nice feel. Um. And it's also important because Mignola did the covers for the original Death in the Family. So him providing that cover there is is definitely nice, uh, a legacy move. See, I, I never heard of the Robin Lips one. Huh. Well, no, oh, it, that's new. Yeah, it came out recently. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to pick it up. Oh, they're already at. Oh. All right. Well, I, I can get it. Per- okay. Never mind. Back to the show. So I just want to okay. <laughs> I, I was on eBay <laughs> for a second. <laughs> oh, yes, this. New Jari, this is you, buddy. New York. So, uh, according to Deadline, Netflix is working on a live act- action adaptation of the f- uh, popular graphic novel series from Boom Studios, Irredeemable, and its companion series, Incorruptible. Excuse me. The project will be directed by James Samuel, known for his work on The Harder They Fall with uh, Kemp Powers, an Mm Oscar-nominated writer handling the script. Producers Sean J.Z. Carter and James Lassiter are also involved. The series will focus on the character of Plutonian, the world's most powerful superhero who suddenly turns against humanity, prompting his former enemy... Max damage to step up and try to stop him. Max must delve into Plutonian's mysterious past to uncover the key to defeating him. 
it, it I, I'm loving the 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 indie studios getting their their uh, time. I, I I've loved most of Netflix's uh, uh, adaptations of different comic mm -hmm. book properties, and I, I'm I'm ready for another great one. Absolutely. And this is definitely a great one. I mean, I've been a fan of Incorruptible and Irredeemable for years, big, especially of the, the, um, the sister title, Incorruptible, um, where you see now that the, the big hero is now the villain, now the big villain is now the hero. Mm. And there was an interesting learning curve there. As they're, how, how, do you, how are you a hero for a world that's basically falling apart? So, you know, it's pretty interesting. Um, but there's a lot of that there. There's that jar there. I believe Michael B. Jordan announced that he's going to be working on an ad. He's going to be working on in some capacity on an adaptation of um, Static Shock, which is oh, huge. Really? Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. Uh, yeah, he's going to produce it. But there's a lot going on there. You know, so it's just, I, I think we're just, we're at a good time where superhero culture is at an all-time high, but we just need that kind of diversity, but also that kind of fun. Yeah, you know? it, it, and I like these more darker kind of superhero stories that are being told, like, like Invincible, although it, it's not completely dark, it has some very, very dark moments. Yeah, but Invincible works. Yeah, you know, and I think also having Invincible as an animated film definitely helped. Oh, definitely. You know? I so. hear they're supposed to be making uh, Last Ronin into a live action. They're talking about it. Nothing's been confirmed yet, but they are talking about it. That's the rumor. So we will see. The rumor mill continues. Indeed. Is there any other news? I bet it's kind of uh, people last time, right? That is it. That is We're all news. done. All right. Well, you guys watching X Men 97? <laughs> Jar, save it for later. <laughs> We're already five. past our two hour mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll wrap things up and uh I'm gonna I'm gonna join you, Jar Jar. I think I'm gonna order that Robin Lives. Yeah. Uh yeah. Okay. Well, Without well I'll try to find the best deal and we'll we'll just trade up uh Jar Jar, we're ending the show. Oh, I, all right, I, all right. All right. Uh, well, hey, you can find me. Oh, fine, well, you go first. Uh, oh, yeah. you go first. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, you know me. Uh, I, I moved. I'm not going to tell anybody where except these people. <laughs> I know. It's the moon. Uh, but yeah, it, it, no just. Just Google me. Uh, but more importantly, head on over to the dorkening.com. You can learn more about shows there and check out, you know, all the stuff we do here on splash pages. Uh, go check out, uh, you know, our socials, our YouTube and whatnot. Uh, and I will kick it over to Carrie. Hey everybody. Uh, you can catch me here on splash pages with the dorkening folks. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Carrie Sanders. You see a crow as an avatar. That is me. And you can also find me on the Owl Light Network. We are hanging out below the umbrella of the Dorkening. And we do a lot of storytelling shows. And uh, the next thing that I have coming up is going to be on Sunday. We're going to be doing a live storytelling, kind of like a campfire get-together, that is called the Owl Light Society. So, yeah. Check us out. Check me out. And there's this great gal. Uh, we call her our gal Friday who answers all of my socials because I'm, I'm socially inept. So, yeah. That's me. Go go, go to Jar Jar. I can't Jar, you're stop swaying. All right. So, you can find me every week here on Splash Pages at 8 o'clock on YouTube and Facebook. And you can also check out the the uh, Reeducation Nancy Ann Ritter uh, on the YouTube's best place to find it. And let's see, Terrificon is coming. Go to it. Get tickets. Go. It's going to be the Comic Con not to miss. And do I have anything else? Uh, no, that's it, Drew. 
Hello, my name is Drew. If you enjoyed everything that you saw here tonight, come back next week. Next week, we'll have more fun, more craziness, more jokes. There might be more news. And we will also have two extremely awesome guests. We will be having uh, Tony Fleeks and Trish Forrester, the creative duo behind the absolutely wonderful um, Stray Dogs and the current horror animal series, Feral, will both be here. So we're going to be talking Yay. to them. We have a bunch of guests already basically covering our rest of our April and starting to go into May. So this is a great time to, to join us on our journey as we continue to kick more and more ass. But if you need to talk to me, I'm on Facebook. Down below is my Instagram. I'm places, I'm things, and I'm so fucking tired. So. And we'll catch you later. Bye. Bye, everybody. Uh